Hello everyone and welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast. I still don't have the music from last week, so if you were here for last week's opener, you know that with the new computer, I didn't fully prepare. It's been a crazy last week for myself as well, so we're just going to go directly in without the whole Jersey-style music going off right here at the beginning. This week is the long-awaited 4.0 edition of Air Zivia, and... Man, do I have something to say before we start that. But first, let's introduce our host, of course. I am one of them, Michael, Mr. Happy Povero. Of course, joining me is Sly, a.k.a. Sly the Fox, a.k.a. Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox, a.k.a. my boy Blue. How you doing, my little chocolate muffin? <laughs> For a sec. <laughs> what is that you're drinking? Is that iced tea? Arnold Palmer. Arnold a Palmer? drunk Arnold Palmer. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How you doing? Dandy. I kind of want to include the picture of the ch of your face photoshopped oh, on top God. of the chocolate muffin. I think I'll prepare that. That way there's some context as to why I called you my little chocolate muffin. There's a little bit more context. There's more context, but at least they need to see the picture of the chocolate muffin. Don't worry, Sly. I'll make this, I'll make this as painless as possible. I promise. But anyway, while I'm getting your chocolate muffin face ready, uh, why don't we introduce our other guest who's risen from the dead just to ask us lore questions, because that's how much he loves us. We have Ethos Baklava Asher down here. Hi, everyone. Hi, what's going on? I've been been in bed for five days, and uh, for those of you who thought I was dead, I, I apologize for that. But I mean, you, you are dead, though. Yeah, mostly. I'm on, like, I'm on, I'm on a lot of different medications, so I can get through the next couple hours. Awesome. Good. Uh, if at any point you feel like you're going to die, uh, just tell us and we'll uh, we'll postpone the other half of the show. I'll just die. I'll just die right here. Don't fine. do that. That's that's not good for that's not good for ratings. That's so good for ratings. You have any idea how many hits you'll get for having That's like... not hits is not ratings. Hits is traffic. Yeah, well, who cares about the ratings? Yeah, Traffic's I guess you got a point. If, if anyone cared about the ratings, yeah. then half the shit that's on YouTube wouldn't exist. Well, your channel wouldn't exist. Exactly. <clears throat> Burn! For that, you don't get to be a baklava. Oh, you have to be a croissant. Now, he wanted to be a, like a, a breakfast or a pastry or something as well. So he Whoever has baklava for breakfast is insane. Don't have baklava for breakfast. That's a terrible breakfast choice. Uh, sounds like a great breakfast choice for an American, at least. But Yeah, for an American. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the fucking Danishes with like fucking piles, like mounds of sugar oh, and things on no, top man. of them. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Well, on that note, so this week, uh, we weren't 100% we weren't sure with how Ethos was feeling if we were going to get to do uh, Air Zivia this week, but he, like I said, he has risen from the dead so that we can have our planned show this week, so I do I do appreciate your, uh, your valor. That being said, we want him to talk as little as possible since he's stressed, his voice is stressed, so we don't want him to get sicker by, by overexerting himself. So we're not going to do the fancy intro. I've, we didn't even have music at the beginning of this show, so professionalism is at an all-time high. That's, that's the reason. It's not It's not that Mike's unprepared. It's that I'm slowing No, me. no, no. I'm saying those things are additive. Like, I'm saying I didn't have the music and that, and it's just like... All right. It's just like, this is the lowest production A or Zivia we're going to ever have, because I couldn't do that. He's, he's sick, and we want to let him take a break, so... He's good to go. Right. I am okay. also very unprepared, though. Like, I'm not gonna throw in the, I'm not gonna throw up the white flag, but kind of already. Did. I kind of already have. I've like been so not paying attention. I'm just kind of praying it's things on maybe some of the sightseeing logs that I've read, <laughs> and that's about it. Because otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna get boned hard here. How you doing? Well, we're um. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be too hard on either of you. You say that. No, I always say that. I do. I say that. Like, to really be fair, the, the last one was actually, like, probably the most competitive one. The one we had prior yeah. to this was probably the most competitive. Yeah, and this this is, I'm trying to do, like, m more like that. But we're splitting it into two, two distinct rounds. Uh, the first is going to be titled West, and the second is going to be titled East. I'm pretty sure you guys can read between the lines there. In between um, the lines, it's about Favner. Uh, that's yeah, because it's middle. yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's about Favner. All right, 
Okay, got it. Perfect. Can we just start? Please? Can we just start? Yeah, you want uh, your belt that quick, Sly? <laughs> you might want to put it back on. That's why you can't see Sly below the waist right now. He doesn't have the belt on because he needs to earn it again. So I, I, I was kind of thinking, I, I had this um this moment when we were on top of Bowser's wall, like way back when, and Papalimo's, you know, facing off against this this uh, formative Shinryu. I just wanted him to like mm. whip off the pants, like strip the pants style, and have like this golden sabu gar. Denmo, you now have your next video. Yeah. 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 And it like blinds Shinryu, and Shinryu's like, oh no. And then Crash Bandicoot comes out. Important yeah, detail. Crash Bandicoot comes out of his. Out of his uh, where, would, where would Crash Bandicoot come in there? I don't know, but he's, he's got his pants off. So it's like poke out be... of the subligar and be like, where? There you go. <laughs> okay. So, well, which round are we starting with? All right, well, we'll start, I think we'll start with the West. All righty then. That's probably the logical place to start. So uh, who, wants to, who wants to go first? I don't know who goes first. I think we, sh I think we do defending champion first. Defending champion first? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, Sly, you got you to gotta break out that knowledge on the first, on the first question right, so, we so, can get our, so we can set the precedent for the show. Oh, I'll set the precedent, all right. You feel strang? No. Yeah. No. Yes. No, Sly's been doing me. really well the last few. He's really pulled it out on some of the tough ones. So I've got faith. All right, Sly, so this, this first uh -oh. question is for you. All right. What is mm -hmm. Black Rose? <laughs> Sly, your face, I can't. Come on, baby. You've got your, you've got your eighth of cards. You had to at least have started this quest chain. Black Rose. Black Rose. It's sad because I do remember the quest chain. I just obviously have, you know, Cold Steel was when I was doing it. <laughs> so the amount of care that was there. Yeah, it would have been around that time yeah. when, you, when you picked this up. Yeah. This was a fucking awesome quest chain, by the way, for people uh, that haven't done it. And, and don't read chat. Yeah, chat's close. Chat's closed. Um, was, was this one of the quests in the fringes? It was. Black Rose. <clears throat> if like, I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here, was this the um? Was it what the Garleans were using for the experiments? In the hut there it was you have to be a little bit more specific regarding what it was oh, yeah it was something they were experimenting with like it was a I don't remember if it was actual plant or anything but it was a thing that kind of made made people go a little bit insane like it that's just it, it's such a no, go to happy because that's just such. No, a no, no. Fun. Finish it. So you so just at least finish that thought. I'd rather you take the shot in the dark and not pass it on to me, and I have to finish up your sloppy seconds. Oof. How you doing? Um, yeah, it was the. Um, I don't remember if it was specifically a plant, but when the Garleans were doing experiments in, I forget what the hut was called in the fringes. Um, we met a met an old Garlean scientist who mm -hmm. isn't anymore mm -hmm. and um, talk about how he kind of divulged the experiments themselves and um, I don't remember what the specific affliction was but mm -hmm. it did make people go crazy I mean that's the that's the it furthest made I got. Him go crazy yeah it made him go crazy too <laughs> that's the furthest I got what was the purpose of Black Rose you're so close Sly, this one I feel like I don't I don't we'll know. Give you but... half of... Oh, can I can I can I try for the other half? You can try for the other half, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. It was it was a biological weapon, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a chemical weapon. Yeah. Um yeah, I'll I'll give you the other half. So it was it was a chemical weapon that was uh being developed by one of the head scientists of the fourteenth Legion. Um mm -hmm. and they did uh experiments on uh on basically on prisoners, mm -hmm. put them in 
Hill, which was this abandoned village, and they did experiments because the the purpose of it was to like uh, kill people without uh, destroying buildings or anything like that. <clears throat> um, and after the initial tests, Gaius basically shut it down because he was so appalled by it, and he was all about, you know, oh, I want I want to have a people to have you know conquered and ruled. I don't want this you know dead and decimated land. Right? That was like the Kefka drug. Because he just wants to murder everyone. So Yeah, basically, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so it's pretty... Out beautiful. of curiosity, do we ever find out what the... what? Oh, no, never mind. I'm thinking... I'm trying to think if, if we found out the name back in Final Fantasy VI for the chemical weapon that they poisoned in the river. In Doma. I just I wasn't know, sure. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we ever found a name. I think it was just generic poison in yeah. Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, this is obviously, like, uh, referential to that. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we actually got our hands on the scientist who created it. Uh, he's in the custody of the Aeolian Alliance now, but he has no memory whatsoever of what he did. And, uh, yeah, just your daily reminder that guys did nothing wrong. <laughs> Good thing. Too bad he's dead. You don't know that. You can't prove that. That's what you think. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see when we see Elidibus' face, won't we? <laughs> Having a body doesn't mean you have a... Doesn't mean he's alive. Yeah, well, it's going to be somebody. Um, Mike, this is your question. Yes. What are the Crania Lupi? Can you repeat the pronunciation real quick? What are the Crania Lupi? Is this in the peaks? It's is there a reference to this in the peaks? Not, not in the peaks. No? Sure there's a re yeah, there's, there'll be references to this in the peaks. Sounds like a plant to me, but... Uh, it's, well, it's, it, well, it's it's more of a... What's the, what's the word? It's like a, it's like a, 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 a genus and a... Yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a... Obviously, it's a scientific term for some sort of organism broken down. Or at least that's what it sounds like to me. Um, this is what it sounds like. Think of the the second word, loopy. Loopy, yeah. Um, what, what is that? What is that like root in Latin? <laughs> Look who you're asking. <laughs> Come on. Loopy, loopy, lupine. I mean, it's. I mean, I would have just gotten to loopy. Loopy would have immediately led me to the to the fucking the loop. <laughs> I would have been the first place it led me. Uh, dude, I'm not, I don't know, man. Crania, because that makes me think cranium. Mm -hmm. So that's, and then, loopy. I mean, is 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 that is it a wolf? <laughs> I don't know. I keep thinking of the fucking lupin every time. Yeah, every, yeah. Well, I don't know. Loopy, is it, is that's, it, that's that's the Latin, lupin is is yeah. Latin for wolf. Yeah. Is it the is it the the leader of the of the fucking of the the tribe of the of the lupin? I, I, that's my that's my guess. I, I that's all I can get. It's Did you guess? Yeah, it's bra it's head, but I don't know if it's like head meaning like what's actually inside the head, or if it's just using crania as a term for the head of that's something. It's a, a pretty good guess, but I'm gonna have to pass that to Sly. That's fine by me. Go for it, Sly. Um, crania skull. skull. Oh well, skull. skull. The skulls, the uh, the unit under um, yeah, for dolls. Man. That's good skulls. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. That's it, yeah. So, so basically, um, it was uh, an initiative of Gaius. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a unit formed by him of children uh, of Alamegan dignitaries that were born during the occupation. Um, and it was sort of a, an important step towards the sort of Galianization of, uh, of the Alamegans and making them feel sort of complicit or whatever. And like raising a generation as like you know Galileans, um, so basically they were offered education, the promise of eventual uh, citizenship for their service. And what, did I ask a question about citizenship? Uh, I didn't. Either of you want to want a chance at a at a bonus point here? Well, what's the question? On question? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Sly, since you since you got this, I'll, I'll give you a chance at this bonus point first. Um, mm -hmm. How how long do you have to serve uh, the Galen oh, military uh, <laughs> to be eligible for full citizenship? <sighs> I 
at the very least, you're going to throw out a number. It's all my, and that's the yeah. best it goes. Yeah. Because they, I think they was, the skulls are pretty young when they. Yeah, uh, she was, uh, Fodol is like 18. Yeah. Mm hmm. 18 or 20. Mm hmm. I was going to say a decade. You reckon 10 years. Uh, Mike, do you want to throw a guess out? Can you just say if he's right or wrong first? <laughs> I'm wrong. He's I'm wrong. wrong. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because I thought maybe you wanted both of our inputs before you said anything. Um, so she's 18. Um, is, it, is it ever explicitly stated she's a citizen? I don't... No, she, she's not. No, yeah, she's not. So, um, I would have guessed, uh, I would have guessed 15, 15 years. My Dude, second guess would have been adolescent hood, so like 12 or 13, so, yeah. mm. I just don't know um, if she was 10 or 12 when she, I don't remember. And then I, don't I know mean, she obviously it. hasn't been like serving a whole life. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, so see, this is an interesting one actually, because this is, this is based on a, a, a Roman precedent where um, if you were uh, a, a part of one of the, the sort of client states of the Roman empire, you could serve yeah. in the Roman military and you could earn citizenship for yourself and for your whole family if you served in the Roman legions for a decade. For the Galilean Empire, you have to serve for 20 years. Mm, 20. Uh, I thought I wanted to think 20, but I, it felt like a reach. If you're alive at the end of that 20 years, yeah. then you will will have earned full Galilean citizenship for yourself and your family. So that was like the big, for for, um, for Dollar at least, that was like, you know, the, the, the goal really is being recognized formally. like as an Alamegan, as a Galilean citizen, as like an equal citizen. Um, so now that you've got that bonus, but that's, that's I guess, an interesting bit of trivia. All the same. Um, okay, so... Slides nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm yeah. thinking yeah, about your, your, your odds. Okay. Uh, so, Sly, who built the temple at Schism and how? This is in the... Uh, Eastern fringes. Yeah. It's just on the other There's side. Of is that the one with the sightseeing log on the inside on the top? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. it is actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this the temple? Is this the kind of pyramid looking temple with all the Kagirin on top? Hang on, say that again. Is this the uh, kind of pyramid looking temple with all the Kagirin on the top? No, that's in the peaks. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the peaks. No, no, no. It's not that. Oh. Uh... It's a temple. I mean, that's in the question. Yeah. I don't where it is specifically. Um, I imagine you go there. You do go there during the mic quest. You actually go there during the yes. Dragoon quest as well. I don't remember why we went there during the monk quest, but. Uh... In fact, you run into Eric there during the Dragoon quest, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't even remember it off the top of my head. Actually, no, that's wrong. You, you, you. It's a different temple. You meet Eric in the Dragoon Quest. <clears throat> it's called yeah, the I Temple can't... at Schism. Yeah. Okay. Nothing, Sly. Yeah, I've got nothing on the point. All right, Mike. Well, it's not Ivan Coral Fist Temple. We already know which one that is. That's a Temple of the Fist at the at the top over there. Uh, mm -hmm. the Temple at Schism. I see. I. I I actually I remember it. If, if we had had this two weeks ago, I probably would have remembered because that's when I, I did my sightseeing logs like two, three weeks ago. And that's when I had to. There's a sightseeing log if you go in and then on the top looking into the temple, there's mm -hmm. a sightseeing log with a description yeah. of exactly what the temple is. This is, is. one you should not forget. It's so yeah. good. Um, well, unfortunately, it is. Uh, <laughs> um, if I if I if I had to take a guess, generally, the only temples that are in there uh are, are temples regarding monkism, which is why the monk quest takes place there, and why uh, what's his face um, Vidar Gelt goes there when he's trying to he's trying to reinvigorate monkism. So it's sure. not a it's not a temple for for Ivan Coralfist. I I think it's a temple for one of the one of the other uh, monk legends. I just don't know which one because there's there's statues in there of of another. So the, qu the question is who built the temple there? Oh oh, oh who built the temple and how? Yeah. 
how and how okay see that's way that's that's even harder um who built the temple and how well i'd like to actually believe ivan Krolf has built the temple at the very least even if it's not his temple necessarily like the temple of the fist mm -hmm. um and how did he build it i'd have to imagine that he had monks punch the rocks to shape them to, to build the to build the temple that's a pretty good guess but not not quite mm. um oh, so are you before you um, actually get the answer, is it one person specifically or a set group of people? It's, a, it's one person specifically. Okay. So basically, there was a man a long time ago who was hoping to... You know how the, how the monks and the Alamegans more generally always talk about like approaching the sublimity of Raga through like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, honing their minds and their bodies. Yeah. Um, so basically, one guy hoping to do this started punching the side of a mountain. See, I um, remembered that. I just couldn't remember anything else. And after several decades of doing this, he had formed this massive cavern just by punching into this mountain. Um, and he became known as the first monk of the Fist of Rauga. Mm. And a temple was later built into the cavern that he punched. Yeah, I was thinking too much about the temple in the cavern and not the cavern. Yeah. I remembered punching rocks. I just couldn't remember anything yeah. else about it. He literally it. just punched his way into the side of a mountain right. and fought a big cavern. I'll take that loss. I feel good about the punching. Classic, classic monk. If it's a monk temple, they probably punched it, is all punched I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Mike, here's, here's, a, here's another, I guess, similar question. Right. Uh, who built the ziggurat? In the that's the one that you were thinking of slide that's the up that's the pyramid in the peaks yeah. this i know so a lot this i know a lot less about and for what purpose who built it and for what purpose well this is this is one i knew even less about at least the last one i remember the punching i do mm. i rem i couldn't remember anything else about it but i was like there's punching involved here not just because they're monks because there's actually punching involved um the ziggurat on the other hand i don't see i don't think that was built by the i don't know dude it's tough because when I when I look at the ziggurat, it makes it reminds me of um, oh shit, it's slipping my mind now. It's based on another on another type of structure that I can't. It's slipping my mind right now, and not just a pyramid. Um, I feel like it has something to do with balance, but the ziggurat, ziggurat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna end up slying on this one. I'll take a wild guess, but that's about the best I could do. So it was who who built it? What? Well, yeah, slying it. I oh, because you're always willing to give up. I yeah, I'll who, just take a who shot and for what purpose? Who and for what purpose? So the ziggurat, I don't know. I'm just like I said, this is a complete shot in the dark. No, nothing, mm. nothing grounded in reality here because I don't even remember what the symbols look like on the side of the fucking thing. Um, mm -hmm. I I want to say it was not built by the monks. It was built by um, it was built by the late king before whatever it was. Actually, no, it's older than that. It had to be built by someone way older than that. Fuck. Um, was it built to get away from the flood? Was it one? Was it was something to get because the boat gets rid of the flood and the boat's higher up. But it I don't know. That's yeah, I mean you're thinking you're thinking within the right time period like it's yeah. associated. Yeah, it's 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 associated with with way back when there wasn't an Alamigo. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was built before an Alamigo, um, and I'm pretty sure it was not built by hand. I'm pretty sure it was built by magic. Um, something to do with the Red Mage. I feel it? No. I don't know. I I, I unfortunately I now that I, it's all the way back in that time frame, I have even less of an idea. I want to believe it has something to do with Red Mage for some reason. Or like, that, yes. You're, you're so close you're on the right track so well because i just did the red mage quest and i was like didn't i go to the ziggurat for one of the red mage you quests would have, yeah yeah. Absolutely would have. yeah so that's how i remembered it um then it would have been it would have been built by i don't know maybe it's 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 a temple of black and white magic and the and it's where the origins of the red mage began or something or it was like built from underground or, or goes underground where they were actually hiding I mean, yeah, like it's partly that. You know what? I'm going to give you half a point. I'm going to give you half a point. All right. And I'm going to hand point. it over to Slice, see if you can fill in the rest. This, the Ziggurat was a sightseeing wall, right? Yeah, it was. There's one there. Is this in 
it's in the uh, peaks. Yeah. And it's, it's where all the key yeah. currents are, is the thing you were asking yeah, about before. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a good ways away from um, Yunkrat's Hope. So it does have to do with the uh, the calamity. Um, yeah, it's on the other side of the map from the Yunkrat's. Yeah, it's and it's way lower of an elevation. But still kind of serves the same, well, not really the same purpose as, as Yunkrat's Hope. It kind of dealt with the aftermath of the flood and uh according to the um if i remember the sightseeing log it was it was a joint venture by the um miyachi and the ondapori mm -hmm. um not to get away from the flood because it was after mm -hmm. but it was after the flood, there were um, come on, you there, you there, you right there. I mean, at this point, he's at the same point I was. It's just he's looking for reasoning. I just fucking threw my hat out. I think there were unstable weather patterns after the flood. Mm -hmm. and they kind of built the ziggurat in the joint venture to kind of uh, just deal with the unstable weather patterns, or kind of like hold up against the weather yeah that's that's pretty much it i'm gonna give right. you the, the other half there so yeah it was um uh so the result of the six umbral calamity was that uh, the sort of ethereal flow of the realm was like vastly out of whack um and it was causing like you say all of these you know horrible like uh weather patterns all these floods and calamitous rains and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um, and they built it basically as like a giant anchor uh, to sort of drop onto the ethereal flow and like slow it down and still it. Um, so it had like a very sort of pragmatic purpose. And then as a result of that, it became this sort of sacred site as, uh, as like, you know, the founding of, of red magic and became sort of very important to red mages. Um, because that was like the first like joint venture between the survivors of Amdapur and Mark that would, uh, you know, result in the discipline of red magic. So, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, cool. And I was, I was really, um, I was really glad to kind of learn about that because I remember looking at that in the media tour and being like, what's that? Is that like Marky? What is it doing all the way out here? Like, it doesn't quite look marky, but it kind of does. But, like, what's going on there? So that was really cool. I was really happy with that. Um, all right, Sly, this is this is for you. We're going back to the fringes for a sec. Yay. Yay. Oh, geez, don't be too excited. Holy shit. Um, Sly, you're winning. Be more excited. Yeah, it's two, two, two to, to one. one. Yeah. I'm, keep, I'm keeping count. I got it. Oh, I'm keeping count, too. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm using a sticky note to keep count. Points don't fucking matter. Come on. <laughs> um, that said, Sly, the giant tree in the fringes, known oh, as the Percipient One, Percipient. it was once revered by the Gridanians. What happened to change it during the Galean occupation? Uh, the Percipient One. I actually went there, too. That's the fucked you up did. part. Is that one of the yeah. white mage? No, it's not. The white mage quest is near the percipient. I don't know if it has to do with it, though. I'm not I'm sure. Thinking, I'm probably thinking of two different places. Because um, did the percipient one have like a little plateau right on the tree to kind of stand on? I think there's parts of the tree you can stand on there. Yeah, it's south of Castamarians. Uh huh. It's, it's, the, it's the biggest tree. It's like the, the biggest tree <laughs> in the whole freaking realm. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. It's. You can see it from a mile away. Mm -hmm. And what was the question again? Um, so it was once revered by the Gridanians. Mm -hmm. But something's happened to it. Basically, when we, when we managed to get back into the fringes and, and, the, and the Gridanians see it again, it's like changed somehow. Um, and we find out basically what happened. Side quest, by the way. Is it? Damn. Fuck. <laughs> this is what I don't remember then. 
Oh, God. I know of the tree. I know where it is specifically. I think I don't remember what happened to it. Okay. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna probably as Mike says, sly this one. Sly this one, yeah. What's the name of the area where it's called again? Out of curiosity, I know, like I know where it is on the map. I just because I I just uh, can't remember. Dimwald. Okay. <sighs> Dimwald. Yeah, it's the the southwestern part of the fringes. Yeah. There's a cabin near there. There's a cave in it too. Yeah, there's a cave at the the bottom of it. Yeah, it's like a little hollow. I think there. I think the White Mage quest does actually I'm take you there. Times. I'm sure yeah, the White Mage. I haven't done the White Mage quest, but I oh, there's a leave quest in the cave at the bottom. In the yeah, in the, yeah there's the you leave quest for botany where you have to gather yeah. pieces of that fucking tree. And it's oh, well, there you go. It's covered in a bunch of side quests. Then that's all I remember from it. Is just I've gone there. The fucking kind of leave quest for botany. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> the leave quest is, has an. I don't even remember the name of the leave quest to try and figure it out. It, I remember it's just you gather 40 or something. You don't even need CP yep. for it. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Mike? Um, I'm trying to remember what the name of the branches were to maybe give me a hint because they're not just called... It's it's not just generic lumber of some kind. It like has it has, an, it has a specific name for the, the pieces of the tree that you're gathering. Oh my uh, god, you gave us a fucking hint. Oh my god, a fucking stupid. What? Give what hint, Sly? Just, just guess. What do you? Yeah. You already guessed. What was the? What, he gave I us a hint. Yes. Did he I give you the hint? hint? Did he give you the no, hint? No, no. He gave us the hint. What was the hint? Oh. The dim wall. Wait. Dim no, no. Is that the hint? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's got a plat. I don't understand what the hint was. It was something I said earlier. Must be yeah, in, in the question. Oh, Spring free that. Funny how there's a hint in the question. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> the Garleans. They Almost did. Like I want us to get points occasionally <laughs> um well if, if the garland it's like i'm not trying to trick you and yeah it's like well if the garland yeah. something to do yeah, with it seems it, like I mean, that seems i mean like whenever that. whenever i think of something the garlands have to do they always pump shit <laughs> that's the big thing they do it, it always has to do with ceruleum or something with them they're they're always they're always trying to gather resources so i'd have to i'd have to imagine that there was like a there was like ceruleum around the roots or some shit like that ceruleum around the roots yeah i don't know i mean that's that's like when it's when it's guess. when it's garleans i always want to i always want to guess that they they pump something out of it like whether they use the sap for the black rose or mm -hmm. and that was mm -hmm. and that was that or if it's the ceruleum i don't know man but that uh, that tree is is old and it's got a lot of power power involved in it. So considering, so you're just hoping well, actually, the cabin isn't it. the cabin with the dude from the Black Rose quest right down there in the dim wall. No, it's uh, it's it's a, little, a, bit it's, north it's it's a, good, it's a good, bit north. Like, okay, because yeah, I thought I thought it was I thought it was a little bit closer because that that was then leaning towards that is my guess with with the sapper or or pieces of the bark being used in the Black Rose itself. I'm gonna I'm just gonna make that my guess. I'm gonna make that my well, guess. That they, were, that they were using it to create black rose. They were, or that they were using it to create some sort, um, some sort of weapon. I don't think they were just taking the wood and burning it in the in the fucking coals. But watch that be the answer. They were trying to weaponize it. You yeah, that's, that's trying to weaponize. They were trying to weaponize it. No, nope, that's the oh. best guess. Okay, that's a pretty good guess. You've got it like almost exactly backwards. Um, can I? Can I? Yeah, yeah, almost yeah. exactly. I mean, backwards. I won't get points for it. I can I won't get points for it. But was it? contamination from yeah, it was contaminated yeah it was contaminated so when um when gaius uh ordered the the uh eradication of black rose they sort of buried their caches of it um and some of it was buried under so at least i was on the right track with black rose yes yeah, part of it was buried under a beer mill and part of it was actually buried like in that hollow under the tree they just dumped it there and it seeped into the soil right so it corrupted the percipient one and the percipient one subsequently produces uh these fruits and you see like those big sort of globulous fruits around it um so the uh the kalyana the the ananta uh, tribe the bad ones they worked out that some um, that they could actually weaponize the fruits of the percipient one now 
and they can use them to sort of induce like madness in the local fauna and they actually use them to uh try and drive the m tribe out of the fringes they basically uh, so set, close, but like, not close the local enough. beasts like stampeding at them and stuff like that it's always yeah. so close but not close enough punching the mountain fucking weaponizing <laughs> Details are just always out of order. And the thing is, I always get it, like, right after I pass it to you. Um, That's because you guys have done this stuff and, like, you've seen it. You just don't fucking pay attention. <laughs> I remember, I listen, I got the weaponizing part. It's just that it was not yeah, what happened to the tree. Like I said, you just got to back Oh, uh, me. All right. Um, Mike, this one's for you. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this, this is actually, there's two correct answers here. Okay. And you only need to give me one of the answers that's you know you're um, not helping my odds here but thank you that's, that's literally doubling your odds. um name one use for the wings of a morpho butterfly a morpho butter uh butterfly mm -hmm. those are the those are the the like purple ones that, that fly around and whatnot yeah in the peaks yeah there's some of them in the peaks. yeah there's some of them in the peaks um there's one of the uses of the morpho I mean, there's some uh, some obvious guesses, but they're guesses at best. So, like I said, you may have doubled my odds, but zero is but zero that's times fine. two is fucking zeros. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, morpho butterfly. So, whenever I think butterflies, I always think of um, a lot of the times they're uh, spores, very often affiliated with other insects and giving off spores and stuff like that. It can be used mm -hmm. in medicines. It can be used in poisons. So. I'm trying to think of if it's a vax. I I, I want to lean towards the wings what could be ground up and used in a vaccine of some kind. Um, because because there's two possible answers. Can I give two possible guesses? No, he got the other. Uh, one. Uh, it's up to you. You're the you're the, you, you call the shots. That's fine. You can you can give two guesses. It's fine. All right. So I'm gonna say use the wings. Uh, grind them up for a, a vaccine to some sort of to or not a vaccine but some sort of medicine for something in the area. Um mm -hmm. and. The second one I'll go with um, to no, well, that's not how that's not how butterflies pollinate. But I'll, I'll I was gonna say they can also use them to manually uh, uh, pollinate crops or something like that, or to uh, to manually pollinate a, an area. But uh, those are both just guesses. There's they're, they're grounded in no fact of any kind. No, okay, that's fine. Literally just just random guesses because, like I said, I, I don't know. Sly. I don't have this. Oh, is there a minion for those things? I don't know. Yeah, there's a morpho minion. There's a morpho minion. Oh, and I don't know. I think it's from Lost City Hard Mode. Maybe. Oh, I forgot those things were in there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah, right. They're they're at the final stretch right before they they come down when you're killing the spores before the first. Um. Boss. But my God, I think I'm gonna go with your. Well, don't go with mine. They were wrong. First, your first answer, which was a poison. So, yeah, you, well, I got two answers. Why don't you just you take two? I don't know. Can you be more specific than that? I got it backwards again. So it is a poison. You just need to know what kind of poison. I can I give you half a point for poison. Um, and if you don't guess before you give him the other half, I'll guess for no points. Fine. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, what do the morphos actually do? So, if they, if I remember correctly, yeah, so it would be for uh, inhibiting magic. I'm going to give you that, yeah. Um, so they're, they're almost extinct now because they were... Um, uh, sought out a lot during the War of the Magi to create poisons that would inhibit um, uh, basically magical uh, regen. It's like MP mm -hmm. regen. Um, they would, uh, yeah, they, they would prevent that. Um, the other use for them is for uh, making glamour prisms. <laughs> really? That's an interesting yeah. one. <laughs> well, now I definitely know I wouldn't have gotten it. Oh, That's fuck. the last thing I would have known. <laughs> yeah. In fact, oh, I'm, pretty God. Sure, I'm pretty sure that the glamour prisms that uh, Monago uses to cover the flag 
uh, she, it's either that or one of the side quests they, they get you to collect uh, Morpha scales for. Yeah, I, when like the reason I asked because when you said Lost City, I thought immediately of the Morphos and I'm mm -hmm. like, do they don't they silence? They, they do. Yeah, silence. yeah, which is, you know, yeah. dig. Um, yeah, good. Sorry, I don't get hit by AOEs, so I don't know that. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> zing. Uh, I mean, right, but so it I, doesn't matter to me because what, what the fuck does silence? Still got hit by. It. This is <laughs> yours. You. Why right. are the Ananta afraid oh, of mud slugs? Wait, whose question was this? Mine. Oh, okay. I don't give a shit about the Ananta. Fuck them. Wow. Like, I don't. That's great, dude. No, it's like the one thing I hate about the Ananta is that they make them sound like fucking Cobra Commander. It's the one thing I fucking Sly, hate. About. You gotta be kidding me. What else are they going to sound like? They're snake people. Yeah, they're snake people, Sly. <laughs> Cut them some slack. Please. Why are they afraid of the mud? What? Mud slugs. Yeah, I, I, I don't even think I would get this after I pass it to Mike. I mean, yeah, I just didn't Mike. give a shit about the Ananta. All right, Mike. Well, I, I didn't, I, I'm going to use a double negative here and say, I didn't not give a shit about them. But when it comes, but. To, when it comes to mud slugs, cause the Ananta are, are, are mountainous. So I always. The fires, the fires. Look, these are all questions that you can, uh, logic construct. your way out of. Yeah. You can like logic, logic your, way your way through by knowing enough about like the requisite parts. Well, I mean that you'd have to know what a mud slug like. The the, the thing here that you makes me think something about mud slugs. You need to know something about the Ananta. Well, obviously no, the Ananta live in mountains, and the mud slugs obviously also live in mountains. But is the first that thing literally I, all you know about the Ananta? Come on, uh, that's that's a fair portion of it. If I had, if I just had to take a shot in the dark, the big thing with mud slugs is, I mean, when I generally think of mountains, I think of natural disasters. When I think of mud, I think of a mud slide. I'd have to imagine that they're a, sort of an their their fear sort of like almost the, the cause of a natural disaster regarding a mud slug. Um, I don't know if the mud slug is called a mud slug because of a reputation or if it get, or if its slime is like is mud itself. Um, I feel like it could be either or, but it's something to do that threatens their their civilization. I, I'd like to guess whether it's a natural disaster or they like leave their slime on like the sides of the fucking buildings and it corrodes it. Mm. I, I see. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the mud slugs corrode the ground under them. They give off like a poison from their body and it, uh, and it deteriorates the mountains and the buildings and stuff like that, which can obviously lead to a collapse. That was the best guess I had. Nah, not quite. That's pretty good logic. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's fair logic. And that's like the kind of things that you guys should try to be doing in these questions. Um, so, yeah. What we know about the Ananta, this they're like typically very, very vain. They think that their beauty is divine. That's oh, mud slugs are ugly. <laughs> well, I know where this is going now in mud slugs. And, oh, and they okay. think that um that basically uh they they need to um attain their their natural beauty as like respect to Lakshmi and if they're sort of, you know, marred then uh then it insults lakshmi so basically mud slugs are immune to poison arrows which is the analysis sort of preferred method for engaging wildlife um so they have to uh deal with them at close quarters and the mud slugs acidic secretions uh scar the analysis skin mm. which upsets Sri lakshmi so they're absolutely terrified of them don't want to don't want to have anything to do with them yeah, you don't want to upset Cobra Commander. Yeah. I just need yeah. to start applying these things to different things. What do you mean? Because I got that they, the the acid was in some way threatening to them. I just yeah. thought it was their actual civilization, not their fucking looks. That's the thing. Is like, well, yeah, the, the, the acid's threatening to them, and yeah. you know that they're incredibly vain. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can sort of piece them I out. know they speak like this. That's what I know. It's true, they do. That's very well done. Yeah. Wow. 
That was Sly, a... you're winning. Don't stop doing. You're winning by a fairly wide margin, Sly. I mean, it two points means a lot here, I mean, all right? No, I mean, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Mike. This is your one. This is okay. going to be another nonsense question. Okay, so God. Sly, maybe it's so slow. So another no pointer. Got it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, well, I've got you thinking about the answer now, so maybe you'll get it. The dreaming iris is a flower found in the peaks that the Ananta mm -hmm. believe to be a gift from Lakshmi. Why is it so precious to them? If you hadn't originally said because of Lakshmi, that would have been my guess because dreaming flower <laughs> or dreaming iris. That would have been the first thing. Um, okay, shot in the dark. I think, mm -hmm. again, I think this is another one you can logic your way out of Sly, so I hope you're getting ready. Dreaming Iris, uh, Sri Lak uh, Lakshmi, they, it's precious to them. And obviously we fight, you know, the, the whole theme with Lakshmi's fight is 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 the dream. You know, she, mm -hmm. her, those who are, um, what is it called, uh, tempered, they're, the, they're like the dreaming or something mm -hmm. like that. That's what they are. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to believe it has, they have some sort of belief that it is... Uh, that it can be used for such a for almost like a like a ritualistic thing for the young to like to uh I say it's like a narcoleptic yeah like a, like a narc like th they're they can't actually temper but obviously they're young that they're that they raise they they want that specific tribe or that one that uh that uh praises lakshmi obviously they're all about that shit so uh, I'd have to, it's, I've got two guesses, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go with they, they believe it can be used to, uh, to, uh, ritual, uh, ritualize, uh, people into being dreamers without the direct contact with Sri Lakshmi. Interesting guess, but, uh, no, no. that's me trying to logic. So slide, let's see what you got logic wise. <laughs> Is this I, mean, we, I, I really know you don't know the fucking answer. I don't, but I was kind of going to go that way because when, Immediately when you when you said the flower, I was thinking of the petals in the Lakshmi fight. And once she actually, you know, once you kind of Netflix and vril, and then you have to vril for that shit. Uh, I think though, were those petals? I'm those are not so much like irises; they are lotuses, though, are they? Okay. Um, the flowers. Flowers, the flowers are special yeah. to them. Yeah, a different flower. Though. Yeah, I was just gonna go along the lines of like. To inhibit dreams or something, but to inhibit dreams, I'd, like I'd, I'd want to, I'd imagine they'd want to instill dreams, but it would only be affect them though. Oh, That's shit. I just thought, okay, I, I'm gonna take another shot after he's done for no points. Yeah, yeah, I got nothing on this one. I Mike, just, I just realized your shot? my shot would my shot. I just realized it. it it's a, it creates a sleeping drug. Would have been my other would have been my other guess. It could be used. It could be used. No, not sleeping drug. Okay. okay. Dreaming iris sleeping drug. Oh, Pound out. Yeah. So the the logic behind this was exactly the same as the logic behind their their the fucking beautiful. God damn it. Um. So they they use this flower to make uh, an elixir that protects their skin after shedding. It's a face cream. God damn it. So when they when they shed, their their skin is very like soft and easily tarnished for I don't know a couple of days, couple of weeks, whatever it is. So they use the dreaming iris uh, to make like this paste, uh, which protects their skin until their scales harden. I'm just gonna assume everything has to do with fucking looks from now on with the Anat. Like, everything, everything that the the Anat do. Gonna ask us a third one. Is associated with their their vanity like literally everything it's ridiculous um okay all right next question this is your slide uh we're in the peaks we're going south a little bit we're going to alighieri alighieri it's that uh it was that old sort of trade town mm -hmm. high walls and crystal above it in the peaks you following me yeah there's a sound mm -hmm. what? Who hears that sound what sound what a beeping yeah oh it's uh there's a there's a construction site next oh uh, okay i was just trying to okay. <laughs> no lost. you're not you're not having a stroke 
Okay. So, okay. Megan. Um, so Alighieri used to be mm -hmm. famous for distilling a spirit called Arak, A-R-A-K. Uh, but they can no longer due to scarcity of the key ingredient. So what is distilled to make Arak? Make Arak go bye-bye. I'm trying to think from a gathering perspective. Yeah, it's some. Well, I mean, from a gathering perspective, it's it something would, that's there. Yeah, yeah, that's. If it's something stupid like. Oh, it's gotta be something stupid. Don't worry, it's not fucking face cream this time, Sly. It's not something stupid, come on. It'll make sense when he explains it, but it'll sound dumb to us when we're dumb and we're looking for an excuse to not look dumb. <laughs> no, it's not peaches. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did somebody put that in chat? Yeah. There's, I mean, where else would he get it? We didn't say it. Not it's oh, not God, there. And we, I, I mean, to be fair, we haven't oh, wow. seen. I haven't seen peaches, so that yeah, we haven't seen peaches. peaches. That is true. God damn. Um. Didn't we have to do a gathering quest for this? If you did, it wasn't in the peaks. I uh, I I don't know, but I doubt it. I I very much doubt that you would have done a gathering quest for this. Unless it was a gathering quest to establish that there was no longer any of this ingredient. <laughs> Which is not how any of them go. Actually, no. to be fair, maybe the botany quest itself, but I doubt it. I want to say it did deal with botany. Um, what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I say old world figs, but we can get that. Come on, say yes. Yeah, I was gonna say old world figs, but we can get that. Um, some sort of fig. I don't know. Some sort of fig. Well, wait. So you're asking what's no okay? Never mind. Yeah, no, never mind. I had a dumb question. You know what? I'm actually because that, like we, there's like there is a quest, and I remember oh, like well, it too. was it's a it's a leave, and I remember like in there like i gathered old world figs but those give you, weren't... i'll give you i'll give you like half a point okay because no let me let me let me look this up let me look up how similar these two are what old world figs and well how similar figs are to the answer because if, if you're if you're not right then he can't say it right now because i would have to try to be fair, I don't know shit about what I don't know shit about figs and other plants. I know what a fig is, but like I wouldn't know where to. And draw I know that I gathered old world figs before, like by accident, I think. But... Hmm. You know what? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm fuck. I'm gonna give you half a point, uh, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna give Mike a go. <laughs> I can tell you right now, you know what leave quest I did the entire way to 70 Sly? Which one? None, because I did collectibles. <laughs> Look, you, you did I mean, not collectibles were collectibles yeah. were pretty easy to do on fucking yeah. botanists and miners. So yeah. to answer this question, you need not have touched gathering at all. No, I figured I figured that, but I figured there would also be a, a hint somewhere. In, yeah, uh, that's what I thought. In gathering. Mm -hmm. Um I mean I Fuck, dude. I I couldn't even remotely begin to uh, figure something. I would I would have gone with a plant, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to guess one as specific as an old world fig. Not to mention a fig in the first fucking place. Um. So I mean, uh, what am I, what do I go with? I go with fucking some uh, some other pl uh, fucking thing that's not there anymore. It's I don't know. It's it's a, it's a fucking blueberry. I don't know. I don't have any. I don't have a reasonable answer that even can be grounded. Wait, 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 wait. No, I'm not saying if things are like, like blueberries. I'm just saying I no, don't no, know. no. Because I, they're not. In other words, they're not. But is it a date? 
Is it a date? Yeah. Please don't You've say it's a guessed date. You've already guessed they are dead. So, <laughs> so, so stupid. They, before the Galilean occupation, there used to be a lot of date palms that would grow in the area. Um, but since the occupation, the land has become like so sort of, you know, barren and like, un, uh, uh, I don't know, just disused that they won't grow there anymore. Um, however, the Garlands became so enamored with this spirit that they were brewing, uh, distilling, I should say, at Alighieri, that they started importing uh, dates from uh, from Ilzebad. There are actually date palms that grow in Garlemald that are like super, super hardy. They'll grow basically anywhere. Um, and there's this side quest uh, associated with a, a double agent who works for the Skulls, um, who basically ends up sending uh, the residents of, uh, of his town a sample of seeds uh, of, of uh, Garland date palms so that they can start growing them and start making the spirit again. So, yeah, dates, figs. I gave you half a point because, like, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're kind of similar. That's why you, you, when you Except have to look at like, them, like, fig trees. Like, I don't think fig trees would, would ever have grown in Girabano. I don't know. But okay, can, you, can you look up real quick uh, Old World Figs in 14, see where what? Well, Old World, world Figs would be Charlene. Okay. It's not even old remotely world, close. The old World refers to Charlene. Okay. Yeah. Um, whereas like palm trees is something you can see growing in that climate. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, I think half a point is reasonable for that. It was pretty good. Uh, okay. So this one, this one's for Mike, Mike, you got to get this one, dude. You got to, you, do, you say that, but I, I already yeah, remember I said not throwing in the white flag, but please, <laughs> please just do, just, just, I will listen. Question. I'll logic my way to whatever answer right. I can get. Okay, good. <laughs> what is me and Kreps hope and raw god and, if you don't fucking get this one are you fucking serious why is it stuck in the peaks of Girabanya? so i do have the sightseeing lock i mean to be fair it's a fucking boat from the flood they used it to fucking escape the flood who the uh the fucking well do you want me to name because obviously the maki had their own plan with the void arc so the other other maki named depori from the from the war of the magi used it to escape the flood but, but who's who who like, in particular yeah i mean who who like, built it who built it well it's not the like i said it's not the maki we know what they fucking did um then it would be the uh i mean it has to be one of the other the, the it's either the nimians or the amdipori it's one of the fucking two mike mike who what? Bro. Who built Bro. me and Krebs Hope? Are you serious? Mike, come on now. Come on, man. I'm saying this of all people. Come on, man. Dude, like I said, I, Shit, I, dude. I literally haven't been paying attention to anything with everything that's been going on. Zero thing, and I know, I know. Lise literally says it. Have a good show, everybody. <laughs> I'm good. I know. Lise good literally says word for good word. Me and Krebs. Hope. Neocrep! Like, that would be my first fucking... Alright, and who was he? He was a fucking... I don't know, he was a mage. I don't remember. Fuck me. I told Sly. you. Sly. Can't Sly. Just get it. Sly. Okay, I actually remember... Because Good! I, I looked up... Like, I the funny thing is... The funny thing is, like, I've been there before for the sightseeing log. I have the sightseeing log, up. too. And I, I read the sightseeing before. log. Neocrep is a row astro. Who who built the uh, who built the hope um, for? Oh, it's for probably an Astro Quest flip. line too. Then I'd imagine. No, it's not. That's kind of weird. He's not a he's not a row Astro. He is a row Astro. Yeah. Keep going. Um. That's why I keep going. So I'll ask the whole question again. What is okay. the Krebs hope? Can I and have a why for the is boat? It in the peaks of Girabanya? So I want to know like what the purpose of it, why was it built, and how did it end up where it is now? How was it built? How? Why? Oh, no. no, why? Like what? Why for was what? It? Purpose? Well, it was 
well, logic di- dictates it was kind of like an arc. It was built to kind of. I said um, that. <laughs> he was like, that's. The, Wait a minute! I said going. that. He, he built it to um, to kind of, you know, protect people, kind of like the Ark did for the flood, the Great Flood. Um, okay. And what, how it got to where it is now? Um, it fucking landed there. <laughs> magic. It, it, like it literally just said magic in the fucking uh, sightseeing log. It was transported there through um, magics. To its- All right. I mean, you're not wrong. So I'm going to give you the point because you're not wrong. Um, so Neon Krepf. How come I didn't get half? I answered half the fucking question right. You, you answered half of the half question. That was the whole question. There were two halves of no. it and I answered half of it. No, you didn't tell me what it was. You, you, you said that it was you said like why and how story. did it get there? Why? It was I said it was, I said it, obviously it was to escape the flood. But listen, listen, mate. Listen, mate. I'm the I'm the adjudicator. I'm the quiz. <laughs> right? You said the same shit. And I say you your answer was shit. It wasn't good enough. I had, Mark, a, you had a rough time even getting. I had to, you had a rough time getting to fucking Neon Crest of Neon Crest. I told the name of the guy four times before you could. I don't remember. He was a bro Astro that wasn't part of the question. It was He's why and Christ. how. It was why and Look, how. I'm just not who. You. Listen. It's not good enough, all right? I'm just confused as to it was why and how, my, and yet you, all you wanted from me show. was who. This is my show. I'm so confused this is right my channel. now. I'm actually confused as to uh. it was why and how, but I got asked who, and then he got to ask why when I had said why. Fuck your I'm salty. so confused. Yeah, I'm confused. I don't understand why. You're not confused. You're just fucking having a salty. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm actually like, I don't understand why and how, how I could understand, but I had the why, but then you asked me who, but then you didn't ask him who, even though he described who. So I'm just, where did, where did all- he told me who. Because you kept asking. I was asking for, I wanted a certain amount of information. You gave me almost nothing. All right. I gave you, it was used to escape. Let, let me, let me tell the fucking story. All right. All right. All right. Neon Krep, Neon Krepson was an astrologian. He was a Rogadian Seawolf astrologian from the far north, from the northern empty. Um, he used his uh, astrology to predict the sixth umbral calamity, and he built uh, this ark, which is effectively what it was, in order to sail down to Eorzea and basically rescue as many people as he could. Um, and he's sort of, you know, picked up various peoples along the way. Some of them were anthropology survivors. Some of them were Maki survivors. Some of them were just like, you know, people from other cities or tribes or whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically they, uh, as they got further South, you know, the weather got worse and worse and worse and worse. There was this massive tidal wave and he basically used flow. He teleported the entire ship, he didn't know where it was going to go. And it just happened to like pop into uh, the peaks of Girabanya. So like you don't use, you don't use the actual dev team rule for why anything does anything. It's always magic. Yeah. Cause I'm better Wait. than that. Oh, you're better than the fucking devs who actually say that shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I look for better <laughs> explanations. Why can we breathe uh, underwater? You. Well, you I know, if magic it, yeah magic <laughs> that wouldn't have been my first fucking answer i can explain that one as well but no we i we know that one that one there that's yeah. part of the main scenario yeah um yeah. so yeah they were stuck up in the peaks for a time and as we know when everyone when all of like the the you know different broken peoples arrived in Girbanya, they immediately set to like fighting each other and like eating each other basically so neon crep was like no fuck it we're not staying here and they actually walked from uh, Girabanya, so like the far eastern of Ablathia's spine. They walked all the way to the Javanian hinterlands, where the the, the current Charlan uh, colony is. Um, they built another boat and they sailed it back up north uh, to an island where they built a village, which would become a city, which would become. Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Oh, Charlemagne. Yeah. yeah. So he's the founder, the founder of Charlemagne. 
And if you have a look at the boat, it actually has a lot of like Charlene, has like all the logarithmic spirals and, uh, and a lot of like very sort of Charlene elements. Quick question. What's the deal with the wooden bowls outside or the wooden? I imagine they're uh, some sort of like guardians, like golems or whatever. That's what I was thinking too. What's, what's remarkable about the boat is that you look at the condition that it's in, it's been there for 2000 years. Oh, you want to know why it looks that good? Magic. Magic. Yeah. Fucked up, because it's probably the right answer. It is the right answer. It's got like magical wards. <laughs> um, it's also got a, a door to it with, with like a ramp like leading up to it, and there's a door, and it's going to be a fucking dungeon. I'm telling you now. So you think we're going to go have magic? Into, it's going to be a dungeon, and it's going to be it's going to have magic. It's going to have magical salt that just makes. I've, I'm Pride. just saying, you mm -hmm. kept asking me a question that was different than the question that was actually being asked. You kept saying, what is, it? what is it? What is it? I was trying to lead you to giving me And it was making it way worse. It was not. I was leading you in the right direction. You just keep saying, what is? What is? I was just like, the fucking asking me the same shit. I'm giving you an answer. And him yelling. Oh, God. No. Nah. No. Nah. Uh, this is, did I, so Sly, so I didn't give you a point. Sly so like gets half a fucking point for guessing a fig from the other side of the fucking world because it's close to the plant. I don't get half a, a point fig. for guessing the flood right. A fig, and a, you know what, you salty bitch, fine, have half a fucking point. <laughs> I'm just saying, his okay. answer was nowhere fucking close, no, no, but you gave right, him half look, a point. Look, you got half a point, you fucking baby, all right? <laughs> Shit. Um, Sly. Yo. Why are Dara so detrimental to the land of Girabanya? But Dara are those, um... Those fuckers that punch you in the goddamn mouth in Bartums that hit so hard. But they're yeah, also they're, in they're, they're, Oh, the Dara, those, those, those like shits. fucking hit hard in Bartums. They're also in, they're also in the locks too. They're assault Daras, right? Yeah, they're assault Daras yeah. in the locks. Uh -huh. They're in the, they're in the peaks. I think there's some in the fridges. They're fucking everywhere. What's the question? Yeah. Why are they so detrimental? Why are they so detrimental to the land of Girabanya? So they have like this sort of very dangerous impact on the land. And I want to mm -hmm. know uh, how, why. At first glance, Adara almost looks like a fucking golem sort of. Kind of. Yeah, they're kind of like a golem. They're kind of like an elemental vaguely. I think they're soul kin. I'm not sure if, if they're listed because they're a model that didn't really exist before. Yeah, they're not. I think they're. I there. think they're. Uh, I think they'd be soul kin. Yeah, they'd be soul kin for sure. I mean, this is gonna sound so stupid, but is it? Um, I don't know. Is it due to the fact that they have like a? They have some sort of concentrated aether within them. Like it's gonna be so far off. It's just like, yeah, it's an ether thing. Bad. It's a, it's 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 an ether problem. Um, is it concentrated corrupted ether? Mm. Not even on the right track. I'm sliding this one. Go ahead, Mike. What do you mean? That was not. That was the. That was you trying. There's no slying there. Yeah. Slying is when you don't even begin to logic it. Yeah. Well, now you I know. The, now I know it's an ether-related threat. So. Yeah. yeah. I've at least got that going for me. This is an ether-related threat. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why it's kind of weird that they're. Well, I mean, that's why there's more of them in the West than the, the only ones in the East are the ones in Bartums, I believe. I don't think there's many more of them. So I think you're right about that. Yeah. Um, so they can exist more in the West because there's more ether in Eorzea than there is over all the way over in Author. I mean, like you said, I'd have to, I'd have to imagine not corrupted ether, but it's literally just almost similar to a primal threat. It's ether that's being taken from the uh, it's ether that's being taken from the land. I mean, if I had to get more specific, which I'm sure you want me to because mm -hmm. um, it's almost like rogue elementals, in a sense, that take the ether with them and then take this physical form. Okay. 
do I do you want me to go further or try to go uh, further? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you half a point right. um so it, it is a problem with taking ether from the land more more specifically they feed on earth aspected ether um and as a result it basically causes erosion um so you get like a lot of landslides and sinkholes and stuff like that in areas where they've been my feeding. mudslug guess we should have adjusted it to the daras apparently <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty yeah it's pretty much what you answered for mudslugs yeah yeah they, so they cause they cause sinkholes they called landslides because they absorb and remove the earth aspect of ether from the land which is effectively like what holds it together right um yeah so i'll give you half a point for that that's good all right Mike, this one's yours as well all right this one's a little bit a little bit left field uh, in case you haven't realized they've all been left field for me the, today so <laughs> i don't know like they've been pretty consistent this one's a little bit left field though uh why did nanamo reinstate the gladiatorial all cup despite it having been a century since man that's a paladin quest line isn't it that's like the whole paladin quest yeah line. no that because they it's literally the gladi because it's a tournament the whole paladin yeah. quest line is the tournament yeah uh but why oh that's um yeah why'd she reinstate um it? it's shot in the dark it hasn't been held it hasn't been held for a century no um no i think it i think they they say it a lot <laughs> They t literally the entire level 60 quest is them explaining 60 and 63 um i'd have to imagine it's it's very similar to the reason why we had the grand melee back in uh in heavensward um a lot of it was just all this shit's going wrong in ishgard so they did they did the grand melee to raise morale before the treaty signing for mm -hmm. ulda it's 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 a, it's similar it's uh, there's obviously Uldaz had its share of issues with the th her proposed assassination and Raubon being declared, you know, you know what, what happened with him, and then the whole mm -hmm. the whole disruption of the Senate and everything that happened there uh, during 2.55 with the banquet. Then I'd have mm -hmm. to imagine the main the main reason would be to uh, to raise um, to raise citizen and uh, military morale of some kind because everyone gets everyone. Uh, enjoys a little tournament now and again um okay it's if if it's if i need to be more specific um well, the thing is you think you're thinking of the grand melee right the grand yeah. melee was, was, a, was a military exercise nations yeah. competing against each Th this other. is gladiator this is just gladiators this is, this, is just, this is just like privates private citizens uh yeah. against each other it's not they're not representing nations no 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 they're not representing nations but it was more of the uh it was it was more of the the bringing the bringing up of Uldaz morale or the citizens morale or some kind of mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was that was more along the lines not necessarily just the the scale of the nations was not where I was going with it just sort of mm -hmm. the general purpose of of raising uh, of citizen morale and stuff like that so I imagine it would do that but, but that's, that's not its purpose not, that's not why Nanamo reinstated it she had a very specific reason. Well, if I had to label a specific reason, I mean, think about Rob Bond's history, and that starts leading me down that rabbit hole. So, and his uh, his gladiatorial freedom earning, but uh, obviously not earning freedom here. Uh, no, I mean, unfortunately, my logic kind of stops there, uh, and it would have to. The only other thing I could be more specific is just to, I don't know, find find the ultimate gladiator. Simply enough. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Um, and, and that, like, on, on the surface is kind of, like, vaguely implied. But she reveals that her... her no, wait, wait. Sly? I, that was mine. That was my question, wasn't it? Oh, of course. Yeah, so that's Sly. Sly gets a chance. I still haven't even done that one yet. Um, did this have... Right, if, you know, if you know Nanamo's character, it's something that you can guess. That's why I led, that's well, led me there, yeah. Well, I'll take it a step further. Beyond Nanamo, did this have any syndicate backing? No. None. Okay, there, there goes that. Um, Fucking Lolo <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I know it. Because I like my, it. My, my, my like my answer, if it had any syndicate backing, I think it was going to be to kind of for, like kind of a cash grab, a guild mm -hmm. grab. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's actually quite telling that it doesn't have any syndicate involvement. Yeah. Okay. Um. So no syndicate. 
I mean, other than Rao Bun, obviously, because he runs the Coliseum. Yeah. Mike, you said morale boost, right? I well, morale is is a military term, but it, it was it was to bring up this. I said to bring up the spirits of the citizens after all the shit that had gone down, because it's literally been disaster and then nothing from the fucking government for all this time, and then that. So it's been a hundred years since left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you know, so the basically, the it, last hasn't, one it was, hasn't been held. It hasn't been held basically since the syndicate uh, was formed, became more secure in their like absolute power um, because basically the syndicate decided that it was too expensive to run. And they were like, oh, oh wow. no, so it. it was the opposite of the money grab. Um, if it's been that long, then it's, and this is strictly only a um, gladiator paladin thing. Or could yes, be, it's, it's literally the, this is exactly the paladin quest line and nothing else. Well, then I'm thinking that you know within those hundred years, like, and I'm thinking not only in a lore standpoint but an actual actual game standpoint, um, time wise, uh, the job has changed a little, mm-hmm. and um, it would be kind of kind of a melting pot of techniques, maybe. That's why it was initially formed by mm-hmm. the first Sultana is that uh, he basically wanted an opportunity to bring in like various uh, sword fighting styles, centralize mm-hmm. them in Uldar so that Uldar could become this uh, sort of point where like sword play was like developed into a, a, its purest form. Um, that's not why not, none of my reign states. It's a consequence of none of my reinstating it, but it's not. That's a consequence. It's not like the, the, the reason she does. Yeah. yeah that's gonna be my, then my only other guess would be to. Um, if they put new blood into the tournament, like actual rising gladiators. Mm-hmm. To boost the skills of rising gladiators, maybe. Mm. So, basically, she was trying to crowdfund. Uh, she was trying to uh, raise some money through ticket sales and. It and was a cash grab and stuff like that for the refugee relief effort. And that's why it's telling that the wow. city didn't want to have anything to do with it. Okay, I could. Okay, no, like I was gonna be a little bit pissed off that I said cash grab, and then probably would have gotten half a point. But yeah, I probably would have, like could have gotten half a point, but in the, in the uh, context say that I put it in cash grab. Though. Yeah, yeah, I wanted like I was saying, thinking only syndicate cash grab, not refugee yeah. cash grab. Okay, yeah, I'm not that. Yeah. Bad, no. Where the, so the syndicate's like way on Nanamo's back for like using the city's coffers to support the refugees. So she's trying to find other ways to raise money for them, basically. And I now now that Alamigo's free, I'm really interested to see what happens with the refugee situation in Ulda. Mm-hmm. It's like, are they going to want to stay there? Are they going to want to move back? Are Please they... look forward to Pax 4.1. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so is that. Um, all right, this is your slide. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, this, okay. is, this is going to be the last question of our first round. For the West. Yeah. For the West. The West. Uh, why are there so many grizzly bears hanging around Castrum Orions? I have a guess, but I hope it's not right. I really hope it's not right. Why are there so fucking many of them? uh, Mike, are you going to say war bears? No. Because they're like... No, 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 no. no. You're going to make an anchor man joke? No, I'm not going to make an anchor man joke. Just let let him go first, because there's... I have a really dumb guess, and if it's right... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, there are a lot of fucking bears around. Cash there are a lot of fucking bears, dude. There's one specifically yeah, like, by a thing... bridge that I'm very familiar with. No, way too many, way too many yeah, bears. Yeah, because I actually remember the first time I actually gathered, and I forgot to put on stealth, a bear just fucking fucked me up. 
because I didn't put on stealth. Um, cash from the Orients. I'm trying to think. Fucking bears. Um, fucking bears, dude. Oh, fucking man. bears, man. Um, simple, stupid answer. Did they um, migrate from the Shroud? I don't know. That doesn't sound stupid. It doesn't explain why. Why are there so many right there? Why are they there? It doesn't matter where they came from. Why the fuck are there so many of them there? They're fucking. That's just where they go. That just happens to be where they go to fuck. <laughs> and they're like, that's boy, the, yeah. that's the they're only like, thing I got. Watch the. <laughs> that's the only thing I got. They go to they go to the fringes to fuck. I don't know. Fly, just because you go to the fringes to fuck doesn't mean the bears do. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the ERP happens, man. Oh my god. Right outside Cash and uh, I have nothing. Mike, what is your answer? I'm Dude, I was just going to guess that there's fucking honey in the trees, man. I was just going to guess that there's like an overabundance. Because I think of the bees in the area, like the big ass wasps, and I think of their mm -hmm. nests. Wasps don't make honey. I know, but I, I thought bees, maybe there's bees in the area. True, It's a forest, and they fucking I eat honey. I think wasps do make honey in Aeolusia, don't they? Do they? Oh, yeah, because of... Um, yeah. St. Mosian's Arboretum. There's a fucking yeah, whole hive yeah, in there. Yeah. yeah, they literally... The whole fight is literally... Uh, takes place on a honeycomb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that literally was my fucking stupid guess. I was like, well, there's wasps and bees in the woods. And, no, and bears that. like honey. <laughs> That's what I got, um, man. So, the Aeosian Alliance making quite a large presence in Castamarians. Uh, they had to dig a lot of uh, latrines. Which is basically yeah. a hole that you poop in. Yeah. And the bears are attracted by the smell. The bears were attracted by shit. Yeah. So they've all come out of hibernation and they're attracted by the smell. Yep. Wow. Are they it's attracted because it's a mating signal and they're trying to fuck? No, I think I think I'm they, trying to help Sly here a little bit. They, they, <laughs> You trying to help Sly? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a uh, bear aphrodisiac. Yeah, it's a bear aphrodisiac. Shit is a bear aphrodisiac. Google it. Don't Google it. Yeah, everyone knows that. Don't. Safe search off. Don't be a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be a pussy. Yeah. Um. All right. Shit. You guys are fucking terrible. I hate you both. <laughs> um, all right. So they called poo bears, man. Mike, you're uh, you're number one for round two. I don't want to use the word number one right now. Go, I'm going first You're at the very one. least. You're number one. Wow. Okay. Are you ready? Are you yeah. prepared? Yes, I am 100% prepared. Yeah. You sure. You comfortable. Yeah. You sure. All right. Good. Okay. okay. Here we go. <laughs> was <laughs> who was the first king of Doma the and? First. For what other significant feat is he credited? Well, we're talking about King. We're not talking about Hien's father. We're talking about way, way long ago. Oh, damn it. The first one. The very, very first one. Um, out of curiosity, is, is it this is it been the same bloodline the whole time? I have no idea. Oh, okay. That uh that fucks my logic a little bit. Uh, that's a, that's a, a doozy of one. Well, I'm going to assume what he's known for is establishing the nation. That's an easy one. <laughs> what additional feat? Yeah, what additional thing is he? Well, I want his name. Is his well, you're name... not, well, Sly, I hope Sly has it, because I don't. <laughs> his name's very uh, memorable. And, uh, yeah, and there's, like, something else that he's really known for other than the fact that he united Yangtze and founded Doma. Out of curiosity, is this a side quest? Uh, it's mentioned in side quests. It's mentioned in the main quest. Is it mentioned when they're drinking? He is mentioned in the main quest, I believe. That's what I was going to ask. Is it mentioned too. when he's drinking? Mm, I'm no? not sure. Okay. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Uh, nah, I don't. I don't have anything. Like, I mean, at best, I could have, I could guess the additional feat would be him slaying some sort of legendary creature, something like that, something that's rooted in, uh, in um, old mythos, old east, like a, like an eastern mythological story. And I'm sure the whole his name and everything is, 
but that's 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 unfortunately where my logic ends because I couldn't possibly nail just one down. Uh, so I want you to have a go at it. Yeah, because Kyan was a uh, Hian's father, right? Kyan was Hian's yeah. father. Yeah, that's, that's he's is way earlier cool. than that. Yeah, yeah, that's way way early. I I have nothing in terms of what he did. Did he establish the gates? Sounds stupid. But, uh, mm, he might have, but we don't. We don't know for certain. I don't think. Okay. Yeah. No. Nothing. No. Nothing. So his name was Ganon. Oh, he tried to get the Triforce then. <laughs> so waiting for that. <laughs> uh, his name was Ganon. He is entombed uh, at the Swallows compass and you see his his face is like carved into the cliff there mm -hmm. you guys have probably seen that it's a sightseeing log yeah um he is also credited as the founding father of domen geomancy oh so this is from the uh the astro quest line I it's from a lot of places well the astro quest line would be more specific because that's where you're introduced it's, it's, the geomancy is also mentioned in the sightseeing log and just to be clear geomancy is it's they're fucking conjurers, just conjurers from the east. Uh, yeah, I mean it is, it yeah. is, but the DPS conjurers maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, all right, so this one's yours. What does Yangshan legend claim to be the cause of the multicolored Prism Lake? God damn it! This is a sightseeing log, and I've seen this one. This is Fuck also you. a sightseeing log. Yes, sir. I'm, oh. so gl I'm so glad I got every sightseeing log and don't know any of them. Don't the know time. anything about it. Like, <laughs> why Why uh, do you... I, no, you I did that? read them. The I just log. didn't commit them to memory. Terrible. Terrible. I, also needed the I also needed the EXP to top off a level. Right. God. Ugh. Because I read Neum Crips Hope before the show. Mm -hmm. And I went by Prism Lake. I was like, you might ask this. Maybe not. And you did. Um, it's another one that you can sort of logic make a yeah make a a punt at. Prism Lake. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, prism like a goes to? Is that is that the uh, near the entrance to uh, the Azim step? Yeah, it's like the multi-tiered one. There's lots of crystals between each, between the House of the like, Fierce and and Azim. Yeah, it's like separated yeah. in each of these pools, and the pools are all like different colors. And you're asking why? I'm asking what the local legend is. There's like a scientific explanation, and then there's like a local legend explanation, and I want the latter. Could have logic the not legend one. The yeah, the not legend one is pretty straightforward. The not legend one is basically there's very high purity crystals yeah, there. That was easy. I'm trying to think of the Azima. It probably doesn't have anything to do with that, but it's really close and it's really remote, so it might have something to do with it. Um I'm going to say that the local legend was um, because it has nothing to do with our raw lore, but it's really close, and that's the only that's the only thing I can go off of. So if yeah, it's not our this is the Yangshu thing, it's not a it's not a it's Zayla. not an our, it's not a Zayla thing, but it's no. that's the thing. It's right right on the other side of it though. That's why I'm, hmm. that's the only connection I can draw. Um, there's a lot of legends that aren't drawn there. The problem is yeah. there's a lot of legends. So, Prism Lake. Mm -hmm. Multicolored tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that may be a 
and again, just sticking to this, uh, a god or goddess or god um, mm -hmm. built sort of a stairway a kind of colored stairway to um, to kind of bridge the gap for his or her lover. You know what? That's pretty much it. Are you fucking serious? Because I was going with the Zila and everything, and like because it's right there. And I'm like, man, uh, yeah, okay. It's... So what? Well, actually, the, the fact that you mentioned like the lover is like you must have you must have read this. Um, so basically, the legend goes that there was uh, an angelic being who formed a, a bridge out of a rainbow, so that her mortal lover could ascend and, and be with her. Um, so it's not a, it's not it wasn't steps it was a bridge it was a bridge oh. but it was a bridge like between heavens and earth so wow. it's the same and, thing. and all the different nothing. colors so, are, the, are the remnants of the rainbow yeah. of the bridge yeah um so the gods were furious because that's like not cool um so the gods smashed it into a thousand pieces and those pieces fell to earth and formed the pr prism lake that's how the legend goes so you go with these you go with these old eastern legends because they're all based on like actual old eastern like any legend or they're based on like an actual old eastern legend there's like a lot yeah. of reality grounded in yanja yeah. and Hingashi and everything yeah. um yeah so that was a, that was a good I guess actually, i imagine you must have read that to, to yeah. a guess no no but because see like my logic was like you know the Azim steps right next door, so that's like a lot of fucking lore, and hmm. it might have there, there might have been like some lore that kind of got intertwined. The sun and well, the I mean, if you, if you look at the map, there's actually like quite a there's a little bit more distance than it appears. Oh, okay, yeah. Like in between each of the zones, there's these corridors that actually represent like a space equivalent of like another zone. Mm -hmm. Effectively, it's just like oh, but there's nothing interesting there. That's basically how the, all the zone corridors in in Othard seem to work at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a really good guess. Um, all right, Mike. Next to the Kugane Tenkonto, the Tenkonto being the Etherite Plaza, uh, there is a large statue of a mounted samurai. Who is he? I was really hoping this could be a question about the host story. <laughs> As soon as he mentioned that, I was like, please no. be a question about the hostelry. No. <laughs> please be a question God about the hostelry. No, no, no. The hostelry sightseeing log is actually kind of shitty compared to what you have well, to do. Well, tell me, tell me about the hostelry. Yeah, no. I, I mean, it's, it's a fucking hostelry. The hostelry but. sightseeing log is so uninteresting that I did not feel great after getting to the top. Good! Uh, you're not supposed, you're not supposed to. to. <laughs> uh, so there's, a, a, I mean, a, a mounted samurai. I mean, dude, that's like, as... Unfortunately, there's very little logic here, other than the, other than literally the dude who fucking founded Kug uh, Kugane. Literally, the the beginning of the of the what are they called? Um, the I can't remember. I can't fucking pronounce it. The ones that ones for the samurai quest line, the Setsu, the se, those guys. I can't re I can't remember how to pronounce it right now. Seki Segumi. The Seki Segumi, yeah. The, mm. the but why would he be in the plaza if he was part of the Seki Segumi? I don't know. When I think of samurai and Kugane, I think of the enforcement of the Seki Segumi, and I think of and I think of the whole shit we go through with the samurai quest line regarding the origin what's originally taught versus what's being done now, which eventually leads to basically the complete collapse of the Seki Segumi. So uh, mm. I'd like to believe he's the one who initially. Uh, initially uh, created the Sekisugumi. If you're looking for a name, unfortunately, I don't have one. Um, if he did form the Sekisugumi, we don't no, have it. We don't know. For that. Okay. So it's not the answer I'm looking for. So you want to you want to take a punt? Again, I still haven't drank. Just want to know who he is. You can give me a name. You can give me what clan he's from. Oh, he's from a clan. And tell me what he did. That was. Significant. The fact that he's in the plaza should be pretty telling. I just couldn't draw anything from it. Because I'm immediately going right back to Doma for this one. So, What's well, Hingen? It's not. Yeah, Hingashi. Yeah, Hingashi. Hingashi yeah. is Japan, and um, Yanja is um, China, China. If I recall, yeah. yeah. Mm. Pretty much, yeah. 
Yeah, I couldn't even try to logic my way out of this one. Okay. So his name is uh, Zuiko. I don't know if that's a if that's a reference to Japanese history. I haven't had a chance to look that up yet. Um, his name is Zuiko. He's of Clan Buhen. He was a great Hingan warlord, uh, and he founded a place named Suenokuni, which I imagine is one of the other uh, townships or cities. On, uh, on Hingashi. Yeah, to the east. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I could, I would have taken any of those. They're, basically, there's a local drunk that's like staggered out of the hostelry and is like oh, sitting in front of it. And one of mm -hmm. the ladies is like trying to give him the move on. He's like, no, you don't get it. The statue is such a mouth that we tell you, bro. It's so important. <laughs> um, yeah. So he tells you a little bit. But um, uh, yeah, I, I want to learn more about this this Zwicka. Nice story. I'm sure we a lot more about the the Hingan warlords and stuff like that. I I I have a feeling like once you've done the samurai quest lines, it seems like we're probably going to be seeing the rest of Hingashi in the next expansion. I mean, it might as well. Imagine. I don't see. Her. See, that's the thing. If we don't, I'm almost willing to think that if we do see the rest of Hingashi, it's through Dungeon. dungeons. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah maybe maybe mm. but um i mean they they have like a lot of parallels with ishgard in that they're sort of closed but there's sort of reasons why they might become open or should become open at least to like you know outside like military help anyway it's not you know, like, a lot it's very much rooted to the way japan functioned several hundred years yeah. ago yeah that's true all right sly this is yours yeah uh, besides eating them, what do the Confederate pirates use sea serpents for? God damn it, I knew you were going to throw in the Confederacy question. I mean, not it had to happen. Was. Yeah, not the not one I was hoping for. Um, sea serpents. Mm-hmm. Because every fish had a use in the Ruby Sea. Almost every fish had a use. Uh, I was gonna say think something stupid like lamp oil, but that's a different fish. That's a blue fish. Mm-hmm. Mail like armor. No. Is it even no. remotely close? No. Mark, no. you want to take a guess? Dude, whenever I think of sea creatures and I think of boats, I think of Final Fantasy V and I think of Soldra. I think well, it's, the, it's the sea serpents, like they're the big snakes. The big snakes? Okay. They're the ones that look like, uh, what's his name from turn one? Caduceus? Yeah. Oh. Same model as Caduceus. Oh. Okay, that changes things a bit. Sly, you look real upset. Don't worry, you'll get a chance for no points to answer it correctly after this, okay? Great! Well, I'm now I'm caught because I have no fucking idea, Sly, so I'm mind shot in the dark. Um, so now I gotta figure out what I said that pissed you off. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so they eat them, which seems disgusting because they don't look like they taste very good. Well, they eat everything. They eat yeah, anything they yeah, that's true. Um, I'd have to imagine it, it's if it's not like armor or weapons or harvesting their poison for something of, of other use, um, which could be it because before they eat them, they'd probably want to, if they are poisonous, get any of that shit out of there. Um, I don't know. I'd have to imagine it has something to do with transportation. Uh, transportation. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's very few things that a snake could do. That's where I was going before. That's kind of where my mind is still set. But and once I once you said they were like Caduceus, I was like, what the fuck are they gonna like? What are they gonna send messages of fucking bottles? They're gonna tie it to his back. Um, so uh, they use, I, I guess they could use the, I don't know what, what to call them along the side of his head because I look at the side of his head and they almost look like um, not fins, but. Uh, a webbing of some kind. They use it for the sails of their boat. 
they use they use the part of the body. No, Sly's upset that I'm wrong. But I was but gonna true. say I was gonna say the the parts of their bodies that they use for to be agile to swim because there's a part around their neck that I'm thinking of to use for the to make the sails of their boat. But Sly looks like he wants a guess for free. Uh, well, no, the fucked up thing is the fucked up thing is like I remember this and like I kind of I was like wait sea serpents and when you said snake I was like fuck this is a side quest. Like I love how you have the yes. right answer every fucking time. Poison. Because you had there was a side quest where you had to like weaken them but not kill them and capture them okay. to kind of take their I think remove their glands for the poison. What's what's the poison for? What are um using? I'm always on the front. Dude, there's why cause I there's cause there's multiple logics and I know one of them's right, and I just have to put my mind to one of them. Oh god, if I can remember what the poison was it a I, did, I actually did this side. It wasn't a sleeping poison. Uh, it wasn't a sleeping poison, was it? But I think they used it in hunting or something. Um, or for the tip of their arrows, for the tip of the Roman arrows. Yeah, I don't remember. So, um, they did use the poison. Um, mm -hmm. Specifically, they will. It's a venom, not poison, because it's a snake. That's not here nor there. Um, so they use it to spike the drinks of uh, traders. There you go. Um, and nine times out of ten uh the the traitor would die and, and the traitors who survived would be become part of the confederacy wouldn't they or they kind of get like a second chance yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that would be like indicative of their i don't know well, it's funny this is a side quest i did do believe it or not yeah I remember. I remember because it was one of those I stupid only, ones where I, I only did the side quests that were in the confederacy base those are the only ones i did it, it was one of those stupid ones where you had the fucking like catch shit instead of killing it, and then you got and you keep the, killing it, and you're like, uh, why am I not doing the quest right? And then you read it. Yeah, yeah, this is a terrible idea. Don't put a giant fucking snake in a hemp and sack, Jesus. Um, yeah. All right, bye. Yeah, we're still talking about the Confederacy. All right. What would a Confederate pirate mean if he told you that the devil was clearing his throat? The devil was clearing his throat. Diggity. Yeah. If, uh, if a Confederate pirate sort of looks at you and goes, "Oh, is the devil clearing his throat?" Oh, the de oh, mm -hmm. not not the devil's clearing the throat of the person telling you. De it's they're talking about somebody else. Oh, devil's clearing his throat like that. Yeah. Okay, that's. Yeah. I was gonna answer it based on. As in the devil is clearing the devil's throat. Okay, there you go. That's 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 uh, that's far more clear. Well, obviously, it, it speaks to how they feel about the person who's actually talking. If it's a devil, then I I mean, it immediately turns to the Garleans for me. Unfortunately, um, it's either a traitor, a Garlean, or literally a low-ranking con Confederacy person that they fucking don't like. So, slide. No, what are they? What are they doing? What are they doing? The person, the devil. What are, they're clearing their throat. Like, what does that? What does that mean? I don't want to give the obvious. I gotta, I gotta think of something more creative than. <clears throat> yeah, they're literally just clearing that. No, throat. there's no. I mean, but that's like when you think clearing your throat. Obviously, like yeah. that's the that's the that's the most common sense. Obviously, that's not it. Um, I'd almost have to imagine it has to do with like drinking, in a sense, like alcohol mm -hmm. intake. Um, it's just I can't. No, I no. What? Sorry. Oh, I wasn't done, but all right. Now we can take it. No, you're done. Oh, fuck. Makes me feel like I was actually on track. <laughs> and this is this is a confederacy. This is a confederacy question, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a confederacy pirate might tell you that the devil's clearing a throat. It's an expression that they use to refer to something. Whenever I think of the devil, I think fire. So is, does it have something to do with hell's lid? Yeah. I, An eruption yeah. from hell's lid. Yeah. Yeah. That's go. exactly it. Yeah. When hell's lid is erupting, devil. the expression they use when when hell's lid. I was uh, about to go to. I was about to lead towards the ocean. I was like, oh, it's like when of oh. Uh, I pull the slide there when I. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you figure it out late. Yeah. When I said, de yeah, because I then I started thinking, oh well, you know, the the ocean, the ocean is their devil, and then I started thinking about the outs, like, oh, there's islands. <laughs> so um, so speaking of Hell's Lid, mm -hmm. uh, Sly, yes. why do the pirates try to collect molten lava? 
pretty pretty dangerous, pretty stupid. What could I possibly need that for? It's probably a side quest that pretty much ignored. Because when it does erupt, like they rush in there to get some fresh hot molten lava. <laughs> Liquid I mean, it makes no sense because he's gonna. <laughs> no, because that's the quest. Where, that's the quest where they have where they're asking you to collect liquid hot magma. 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 I was like, you absolutely made this. Is absolutely a, an Austin yeah. Powers. I mean, game. but like the only thing, like logically speaking, the only thing I can think of is like they collect it, but it's gonna harden either fucking way. So they're gonna yeah, it's gonna harden pretty quickly. Eh? Yeah, they're gonna create, maybe weaponize it. I guess. Okay. Weaponize it how? You mean like they're just gonna like pour it on people? No, because it's gonna it's gonna be hard anyway. Um The only thing I can think of, like unless they can shape it or It'd be really fucking stupid there. It's like say that you might a... be right. Yeah, it's gonna be a really fucking stupid guess, yeah, but it's they... pretty fucking stupid, all right. Yeah. They're collecting magma they're, sly. They're collecting magma to yeah. to use as a weapon. And if it's a fucking cannonball, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. Is that your guess? Is it a cannonball? Please don't say it's a cannonball. It's not a cannonball. It's a it's a pretty good guess. Yeah, I was gonna okay, guess good. they shaped it into arrowheads. That's a pretty good guess. Um they uh they use it to forge swords. Yeah. That because... was that was the other Really? <laughs> yeah. They have lead it was legend. either it was it was gonna use it as coal, but like once you said weapon, I went to arrowheads. So, Fuck. there's there's a local legend. How, but like uh, like how so do they like, scoop it up? How do they scoop it up? Do they have like some, some kind of who fucking know? dude? You walk they, up they, to it with your bare hands and pick it up, and then you carry it back to them. Who no, the they, they 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 give you these like heat resistant containers, basically. They're like coated with some resin bullshit. Um, but they forge swords out of them because they believe that swords forged from magma are capable of slaying demons, basically. Damn. I was going to go with that or to, to power the... Uh, well, Could it be that this is the origin of Magni's Axe? No, Magni's Axe is Titan. <laughs> that's, that's definitely Titan. No. Straight up Titan. No. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, I no, he went and found... He, he, came, he came to our place and he found Titan. I mean, to be fair, I, they literally used the model, so I can't fault them for that. Yeah. He did. Anyway, just a thought. Um, all right, Mike, this is back to you. All right. In Tamamizu. Tamamizu being... I know, it's the underwater Christ city. Church. Yes, yeah, it's the, yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. It's oh, not... Just... And it's not, to be clear, it's the Kojin village, yeah. not the village where Yugiri is from. Yeah, that's right. So in Tamamizu, you can see a pair of Kojin polishing a shell. Yes. Why are they doing this? Oh, shit. We actually talked about this three weeks ago. We, uh, you actually told us this three weeks ago on the show. I believe because, I did. Because we were talking about how their masks looked fake and how then, then their shells weren't even real. And then he asked that it, shit. Well, the no. shells are real. No, but you know what I mean? Like that they're not... 100% attached to the body, basically. Sure. They can be removed and... Po you actually told us, so we're both going to look dumb if neither of us get this. Um, okay. uh, let's see. They're polishing, they're, they're polishing the shell. They're polishing the shell. They're polishing the shell. Um, now, just to, I, I guess, clarify for you guys, each they're both wearing their own shells. This yeah. is a third shell that they're polishing. They're polishing it for... The fucking, um, I'm looking for a word that's not like shitty. I guess I, they're polishing it for for a young a young cogen. That's a young cogen. For a young cogen that's about to go. I don't know, go through a rite of passage or something along oh, okay. those lines. That's that's a pretty good guess. Is that your guess? That's my guess. It is what it is. Well, that's 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 not it. But like that would. It's a pretty good guess. What do you reckon, Sly? A shield? A shield? What, they're using it as a shield? That'd be fucked up. It's got, like, excess shells? Yeah. 
Is that you guess? Mario is going to jump on it, and it's going to go back and forth, and the blue shells follow. Blue shells hit the person in first place. <laughs> yeah. Don't be in love, dude. <laughs> oh, it's, no. That's not a funny joke, so I don't know why you laughed. <laughs> no, it's just so fucking lame. Oh, my God. <laughs> always get me. Um, so you, your guess is they're using it as like a shield? Yeah. Okay, so I can't give you that either. Um, so they believe that the soul of the, the wearer of the shell, who is now dead, they believe that the soul has taken up residence in the shell. Um, and they regularly polish it for him to sort of honor him. And they hang it up at the gate of the village uh, mm -hmm. so that he can like watch over and protect the village because they believe that if he does that, then uh, if he does that for like a couple of centuries, basically he'll have an opportunity to become reborn as a kami. Mm. So when you see, and, and you see it on the Isle of Zeki as well, you see it in a few different places where they actually have like Pogen shells sort of uh, hung up on like uh, shrines and monuments and stuff like that. That's basically what's uh what's going on cool deep deep yeah. deep like uh the turquoise trench um sure yeah sure uh slides is yours as well yeah we're still at the bottom of the sea uh, of course oh, why see. why uh it's always better down where it's better to be fair um why are water sprite cores so important to the residents of Suino Sato? Water sprite cores. Mm -hmm. Water sprite cores. Super important. Suino Sato. Yeah, to Suino Sato. Suino Sato era. Yeah, the era. <sighs> this is even a side by something. No, I think this one is. I think this one is a side quest. This isn't part of the main scenario. Yeah, this is a, this is a side quest. Well, my source, this is a side quest. I might have mentioned it other places. There's a few logic-based ways this could go. Yeah. I'm trying to logic this any way I can find it. You can totally logic. It's going to sound stupid because they're surrounded by water. So Sly, that actually is probably more important to the answer than it is stupid. If I had to take a shot in the dark, I'd say that's more the importance to it than less the stupidity of it. I was going to say as a source of, like, drinking and other, you know, daily fucking uses, that was but that just sounds... That, Sly, that, that was sounds... one of the guesses that was not that was going around my head, so I don't think yeah, it's that like, stupid. Because they, they can't, they can't just drink the water out of the sea, and the water sprite cores, I'd imagine, would be more pure, so that was where my mind went, so I don't think you're wrong. Well, I mean, you can't drink water sprite. No, cores. I know, but as a means of producing it. Yeah, to produce yeah. Its, yeah. its ether. Yeah, that's my only guess. That's your only guess? So for drinking water... Yeah. For drinking water and other like daily household uses. Yeah, they use it to desalinate seawater. Yeah, that's I. So, that sounded perfectly normal. God, that was that was. Um, <laughs> and because it sounds so they, fucking no, stupid, it sounds though. it makes perfect sense. God, it made perfect because sense to me. That was what I thought. They basically never leave the village. Yeah, or, yeah they, they never or, leave. Never so go to the surface, they would have no other source of clean drinking water. Yeah. But uh, my my thing is like they've had to have some kind of exchanges with the with the cogent. The cogent, and, yeah, yeah. You know, they had the to, they, one thing that they trade with the cogent yeah. for. Um, and, but basically, a water sprite core would go a very very long way. Like it lasts a long time right. in terms of converting uh, the seawater into clean drinking water. Yeah, I don't know when you, that didn't sound stupid. I was gonna be my guess if you yeah. didn't go because I didn't have another. It was either that or they needed it to keep the bubble the way it was. It was yeah, one of the. That two. was another guess that was going around chat. But yeah. No, 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 clean drinking water. Um, mm. The cogent don't seem to have that problem so much. But... Did did the cogent exchange with them the you know the ability to kind of breathe in the water and shit or no? Uh, I don't or think so. That... Okay. The cogent sacred thing. 
the, the Kojin um, have helped them a lot. Like when they first fled, uh, mm. the Kojin basically helped them set up residence and all that. But I don't think they gave them the, you know, the the gift. I don't think they could have. It's like it was a really kind of difficult thing to do. It wasn't like a simple thing. I mean, it's Our, pretty yeah, us being the warrior of light and all of us, all the scions and whatnot, uh, yeah. goes a long way. Um, all right. Well, this is a good, this is a good guess. Uh, Mike, this is yours. Okay. We're moving on to the Asim step for the next couple of questions. Oh, great. Here. Yeah. So most Zayla tribes have a consistent mythology of their origins. Why are the Oranir of the Dawn Throne different? Oh shit! This is in the cutscene where each of the where they're having the the battle and the silent dude walks up, or not the battle, but they're they when they literally say that's try for that. Fucking name. Yeah, but I mean, like literally, you step foot in Ozim Step, and they tell you right in, in uh, in that section right there. Well, let me see if I can remember. All right. Um. So I always remember where the information comes from, but not the context. Uh. Why are the Orinir different? Okay, to be more clear, you mean just pretty pretty much their belief, not because each of the Zayla yeah, tribes belief. belief of where of where they actually come from. Yeah, where they come from. So all all of the Zayla, they they sort of agree regarding their uh, origins, basically. Whereas the Oranir think that they're different. They have they have a different idea of where they come from. Really a different. Oops, sorry. Um, a different idea of where they come from. I mean the obvious. Yeah. So they're and, not... and it ties it ties into their, um, I guess, like their arrogance and their sort of superiority complex. Well, I, I mean, that... do all the Zayla tribes think they're direct descendants of 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 the uh, the dawn the dawn god and the the moon goddess or whatever it is? The Ara believe they all that believe they that all the other ones one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Um. They they then I'd have to guess the Ornir believe they're the direct descendant of both. Of both, of both, like they're they're like almost like the direct descendants. Like if the, you have both the god and the goddess, and then they are like the the spawn of both. That's the only place I could really go. Okay, I I can't quite give you that. No, it's not enough info. Slime. Well, in general, according to the legend, like every tribe is a descent. Like it's kind of like the child of the. One kind of the coming other. together, co coming together of Azim or um, Nama, but um, I think the Oranir mainly believe that they're you know direct descendants of we'll Azim because when Azim came down, um, he he I think he was like I guess the first Oranir, so to speak, quote unquote. So that's my thinking. He's just they they their arrogance is that they believe they're direct descendants of Azim. Yeah, you get a half point for that. Um, oh, so, only half? Yeah, only, only, only half, because it's not not quite that. Not, right. Okay. Um, so the like traditionally, the the Ara believe that the Ran are descended from Azim, the Dawn Father. The Zayla are sorry, were created, not not descended from. They were they were, they were created by they were mm. the people of Azim, whereas the Zayla were the people of Namar, the Dusk Mother and they fought for centuries um mm. and eventually they sort of put their differences aside and began to live in peace um and subsequently azim and nama uh put their own differences aside and they fell in love um now they had this dilemma because they couldn't ever be in the same place because right. if the sun and the moon are like in the same place i don't know it's just like time and space doesn't exist anymore yeah. basically um so what the Oranir believe is that azim took a piece of his own essence and created an avatar hmm. and uh clad it in the flesh of azela as opposed to uh, a ran who were his you know his people that he originally created uh clad it in the flesh of azela and sent it down among uh, Namaz people, the Zayla, to be their their guardian, their protector, and their sort of ruler, basically, um, so that he could 
you know, be close to Namar in that way. So that's why the Oranir have this this uh, this real um, uh, like this arrogance, uh, this sort of well, quite literally a messiah complex. They believe that they're the the literal descendants of the avatar of Azim. So they believe that they're sort of destined to sort of rule and protect uh, the step, even though they're Zela. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I had a, just a quick question as a reminder: uh, What tribe or origins did um, the the two Aura from Alexander? I don't remember when they they travel back in time Mead? and they. You mean Mead and? Yeah, Mead. Yeah, I I don't remember. I don't think we encountered any of their tribe on the step. Yeah, I just couldn't remember which tribe it was. I can't remember either. Yeah. Um, I'll look it up for you. All right. Yeah, because I, I started thinking about that because it's very... Uh, that's that's like the one hour off story. I want to say she yeah. was one of the, the dust... Uh, the, um, the... Not Dustbringers. The um, Ashbringers, maybe. Um, she, they, were, they were definitely Zayla. Like, I know that much. Trying to find. Well, if you can't find it now, you can always answer it later. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to it later. Yeah, I don't think there's much Alexander stuff in here, to be honest. Um, Hatogo, it might have been Hatogo. It might have been Hatogo, but that were definitely Zeta. Okay. Um, anyway, this uh, this one's for you, Sly. Why do the Uyagir live in caves? God, you answered this up. Oh my god, you answered this weeks ago. Oh my god. Yeah, he, that's ha that happens. I was talking about this a while ago. Oh man, I forget this too. And I asked this question. I was like, what's going on with that fucking tribe in the cave? Why are they there? Crazy, um, yeah, it's fucking. It's like I'm trying to make it like easy for yeah, you. Yeah, it's almost like you're trying to give us like a study guide and shit. Yeah. Um, Should have them on the show every week for a month before we do airs in here. Okay, let's go on. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I want to say that they were, they were exiled, but it goes. I think it goes a little bit deeper. It goes much deeper than that. God damn it! They were exiled because. I, I can't even begin to. I'm supposed to know the answer. Just answer me. Shit. Oh. I mean, we also supposed to know the answer because we were supposed to be prepared. Oh. But yeah. Yeah. we're never prepared. Oh um, shit! Apparently, the hang on, just I, I can store you for a minute there if you like. Okay. Yeah, please. So apparently, uh, Dion and Mide were members of the Hot Go Tribe. They were the founders of the Hot Go Tribe, which were very recently slaughtered down to the man by the Dathal. So... <laughs> that's funny. That that's funny. I'm sorry, that's not funny, but... It's, it's kind of funny. funny, dude. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's uh, dark. All that. All that for nothing. <laughs> Fuck. Thanks, Alexander. Good on you, Alex. So the cave... The cave dwelling... Mm-hmm. The Uya gear. Um They were traitors. They were traitors, right? Uh, because I remember one quest. Like, weren't they traitors? I think in, in some sort of fashion. Some kind of fashion. Traitors. I think he's probably wants more than that. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to logic this. So, in, yeah, okay. were they traitors? Okay. I mean, what, what, who, yeah, like, traitors to know. who? In what? I, I don't know, I don't know. But the thing is, um, they were exiled. They were exiled, um, not by the other tribes, but by Nama and Azim. Or one or the other. No. Is that even remotely close? Mm, sort of moving in the right direction. Yeah, because when he said <laughs> that, if he didn't go more specific, 
My guess what? Did, just, you, did you want me to go more specific? Well, I, I mean, well, the, well, why, well, I mean, I, I'd imagine that because once you started going that direction, I started thinking they were traitors to a zoom and they were in a cave because they could never be in the they could never bask in the light of the sun or something like that. That was where no, I was no, going to go with it when no, you started. It guessing. was, it was, there's it was actually, like, there's actually another like, tribe that believes that like a zim is like pure evil. And they will never venture into the sunlight. Oh, so there is a tribe oh, like that. Precisely because of that reason. But there, there's a tribe like that. But it's not that we get. Okay. okay. Um, well, speak. Okay. Just as which where which cave are they in? Because uh, they're in. They're in like the yeah. westernmost. The west. The, yeah, the like, west. So so that like that that outward Near protrusion the, that's there. Yeah. They're the kind cave. of close to the. They're kind of close to the Dothal. Like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty close okay. to the Dothal. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've killed hunts in there before. Um, yeah. that's how I remember it. Um, well, I mean, my, my original, I, I was, that's kind of like, while you were saying the whole thing, even before you got to the whole traitor thing, it was going to be that they don't believe in Azim, but now I see I've got the wrong tribe. Uh, he seemed to, he seemed to want you to dig into that traitor thing. I just don't know. If, and I was, and I was going I to. I see, the thing I is, I don't to. know which part of what you were saying he was agreeing with. And now yeah, I'm I trying get, to, I'm like, trying to have logic off of shit. I don't even know if it's right. Um, I would have I would have just guessed that they were uh, they were traitors directly to whoever the winner of the the Nadam was at the time, which I'm going to assume maybe was the Oranir or someone or their whoever whoever was currently sitting upon the Dawn Throne. They were a traitor to them, and and they I don't know who they consorted with. I don't know I don't know any of that, but they I'm, I'm go-, go ahead go ahead yeah they were they were they were exiled to the the cave the thing is i wouldn't even think they'd be allowed in the, the awesome step after being traitors to uh the other one especially if they betrayed the orin here they would have just been dead, dead. yeah they would have been yeah, killed or or killed. um well any of the the major warfaring tribes that entered the nadam they would have just slaughtered you'd them. think so yeah if yeah. they if they fucked up in another tribe it would um, be yeah unless it was one of the more peaceful ones like the mole but i almost i almost feel like it's a self it's it's a self-inflicted punishment they're uh they're, why they're living in the cave almost like they're they they betrayed their own faith in some way more so uh than actually betrayed one of the other tribes but i don't have much okay. to go on there so my logic you know, kind I'm of gonna, i'm gonna give you half half a point for that wait 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 wait. okay so here's the sly guess you can take a shot. I, yeah you can take a shot um they were traitors but i think the reason i think you were looking for a reason why they were exiled and i think the reason why they were exiled wasn't necessarily trading practices i think it was just strictly I'm gonna give you half a point as well. So I'm gonna give I'm giving Mike half a point because it was self-imposed. Yeah, you half a point because it had a lot to do with their, their greed and avarice. They believe so. They used to be one of like the larger, more successful tribes. They used to do a lot of mining, collect a lot of minerals and stuff like that. Um, they believe that the gods punished them for their greed um, by unleashing these giant beetles upon their lands. Which basically just completely fucked their lands um, and destroyed everything. And they dug, the, the beetles dug like these big tunnels through the land. So the Uya Gear, after this had all happened, they decided to basically forgo everything except for what was absolutely necessary to keep themselves alive. And they uh, self imposed this this exile upon themselves to live in these caves in the dark. So they exiled themselves. It wasn't. Yeah, because that's oh. the thing. That if they had tr- if they had betrayed another tribe, they were either a dead or b or not on the step. Yeah, or not on the step. Oh, okay. So uh, there was yeah. no other way. It had to have been something they did yeah. to themselves. So self imposed. Yeah. Um, uh, another interesting point about this tribe. You know the the weird uh, elephant men you see in those caves nearby. Yeah. The Ganesha. So, I think they're Matt, uh, Matt, Matt, Matt or something. Anyway, um, so they, the, the Uyghur used to uh, use those caves mining for minerals they used to make weapons. Um, and they believe that the elephant people were also sent by the gods to punish them for doing that. <laughs> Just like so, every, every time they try to do anything like remotely industrious or they, they like, eat slightly more than they require or whatever they think that mm. they got punish them for it right they're uh they're very uh they're very catholic anyway um mike this is yours i yeah. think so yeah yes it is. yes it is okay 
So this is the this is the last of our as step questions. Um, mm -hmm. What are the origins of the hostile stone tablets found on the Azim Step? Oh, the ones in the northwest corner. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones by Bartum's, by the ones by uh, Bartum's Metal. The ones that are in Bartum's Metal at that. Um, well, I mean, a part of me wants to wants to affiliate them with Bartum directly, just because of their their influence there. And I've seen what well, he can. Be, yeah. I've I've seen what they what he can do to stone when he makes the Daras and he has the Guardians along the outside there. But I don't actually think it has anything to do with that. Regardless, that's unfortunately the best I have because they're so close to Bartum's metal. But I think it actually. Sly, so you might be able to use this as the self. So I think it has something to do with exactly the region they're in that's outside the metal and not inside the metal itself. Yeah, it's a little bit broader than just Nadam. No, I wasn't just going to relate it to the Nadam. Oh, you mean like as trials for Bartum? No. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Bartum, sorry. No. Oh, Bartum. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I was just going to go with him being their creator at the very least. Like his, uh, since I've seen what did, he did. Did he create some of them? Yeah. Yeah, he created well, some, some of them, but not, but not all, anyway. but not all of them. Um, the only other thing I'm trying to think of the tribute fate more specifically, um, because that there's a fate that explains it. There's a hunt mark. That yeah, there's it. yeah, there's the S rank, that um, the the mm -hmm. the tip for what the S rank actually is from the NPC, yeah. I believe. Yeah, goes um, into it. Yeah. Um, hmm, I've read that hint before. It's just not fresh in my mind because I've killed that hunt. A lot. I've spawned that hunt because you have to kill the tribute hunt in order to spawn that hunt, or you have to kill the tribute fate to spawn the S rank. Mm -hmm. So that I mean that kind of plays into it. But and I remember it's a, it's a it's a tribute to I can't remember. It's a tribute to something like I I because the name of the thing itself is tribute to something. So mm -hmm. if I had to guess, I mean that kind of. That kind of plays into it. There, uh, there, there are statues that uh, are not representations, but not used to appease some sort of connection with a high, with the higher power. I'm just I can't. Because they because they also spam magic. So, so they're, they're they're wait they're a tribute they're a tribute to what? They're a tribute to Azim. No, 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 okay. no a tribute to. Him. So okay. now you want to have a god? I was just gonna say god, but then I decided to go more specific. <laughs> oh god. Are they a tribute just the big ass fucking bottom? Tribute to Gray. Some of them. Beret. Some of them definitely. Some of them are. Okay. Um, you know my stupid ass answer was just gonna be. Man. I mean, they they are high, they they have, so they're they're full of concentrated ether because they, they yeah. do nothing but use magic. So yeah, that's all they do. They're, um, they're clearly at least that. And they all, what's I, their what's their direct like name? What did you call them? So what are their origins, basically? No, well, no, he origins? wants. Oh, I would thought like, you were going to ask what they're what, actually what is called. It, what is it that creates them? What, what is, is it that creates, creates them? them? For what purpose? I think it's kind of in the realm of like gold, like lore behind golems. They they're created as like defense. I guess uh, to kind of defend to ward off certain things. I don't know what they're kind of warding off, but I think they one to ward off something. Two in in terms of Bardems, like they're a fucking test. I, that's all they were. They were just a fucking test. They were a wall. They were an actual fucking doorman. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm just gonna go, like, just gonna keep it broad as hell, even though I know it's gonna be wrong, but in just a matter of defense to ward off, I guess, strangers. Evil spirit. Okay. Well, I mean, that's effectively what they become, but that's not what they're created for, that's not what they're intended for. Um, mm. the Zayla have this tradition of when, uh, a great warrior dies, they, um, they inscribe their sort of epic on on a, on a stone tablet, a big stone tablet. So they kind of act as like an epitaph, right? Oh. Um, oh yeah, that's only the name of three of their abilities. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's yeah. something there's something about 
the the way that they're inscribed there's something about like the ritual that is involved in doing that that makes them basically behave like golems and they come to life um mm -hmm. and the the supposition behind the s rank one is that it's a tablet that was associated with this great warrior that has come to life and has like started trying to replicate the deeds of the warrior that is actually written onto the tablet um, and that seems to be what's happening with the ones at bottom as well is that they're tablets that are like attributed to and chronicling the the epic deeds of bottom and that uh, in the ritual of creating them they've been sort of imbued with this magic which has effectively made them golems mm. so they're not they're not intended to be golems they just trying to like, remember the exact description of the s rank because it has so i i think that the the whoever was inscribed on the back of the s rank is was in, had had some sort of um, affiliation with the one that's inscribed on the back of the fate one I which believe is so, yeah, which or is like or something. yeah which is why when you destroy the one he spawns yeah, he comes for revenge yeah 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 and i'm pretty sure it's because it was it was his lover or something um yeah so that's what's up with them hmm. all right sly we're we're moving um actually moving back to Yangshi here. It's like about yeah. the Namazu. Oh. You know. oh sticky dicks. Catfish. Catfish. Yeah. So why did the Namazu of Yuzuka Manor try to outlaw tea? They tried to ban it. Man, hey, don't get me wrong, I like some sweet tea with my catfish. You've been drinking tea this whole fucking show. Yeah, pretty much. Half drunk and tea. half. Yeah. Yeah, drunk tea with rum. Um, they outlawed tea. They tried to. Tried to outlaw tea. Yeah, I... it didn't quite stick. This is gonna sound again. It's gonna sound really fucking stupid. La Sly, um, last time you said that, you got it right. Like, if it's actual, just legit fucking tea, dude. Like, the numbers are fucking. Tea. It, it's catfish. They're gonna be fucking stupid. That's why we catch so many. Um, if it's gonna be actual like legit hot tea, then I think like. Wait, because before you answer, can I ask? Is it the leaves or tea? It's like brewed tea. Just tea. brewed tea. Okay, that's like it. Okay, so know. yeah, if it's if it, if that's the case, then it probably has something to do with you know, you know them being kind of semi cooked from the heat of the fucking tea. If it's that simple, like, oh, like it, oh you think again, it's, it's hmm. You think it like grills them, like boils them? It, yeah, like it internally cooks them. So, like, to to kind of morbid. Holy shit! Yeah, I mean, so is the fact that apparently all of the fucking Zale, all the fucking Aura from the tribe from the Alexander were fucking slaughtered, but yeah. Well, some of them escaped, but then they got killed by Alexander. Yeah. So yeah. So that's why I'm doing with them. <laughs> I'm going with the fact that they maybe, you know, fear of boiling or... Okay, they don't like, they don't like boiled water. Yeah. All right. Okay. No. But why wouldn't they just ban boiled water then? Okay, he didn't even want to say no. He just wanted... <laughs> he didn't want to say no. He didn't even want to say no. He's on the right fucking track. No. God damn it. I this stupid fucking answer. No, I feel like he wanted... Answers. Yeah, I think he wanted you to realize your answer was not even remotely close because it was all... I would ban all hot liquids pretty much. Yeah, it's like, why Why would you just not just ban hot water? Um, what do you think, Mike? Oh, think, yeah. Um... Good. So, because they're fucking stupid, I am going to assume the answer is fucking stupid. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they didn't like how it tastes. They just didn't like how they it tastes. They just didn't like how it tastes, and they're that, they're, that fucking, they're that fucking assholes. They fucking love how it tastes. Oh, then they're fucking dumb. <laughs> so, it's like... They, they tried to outlaw it because, because it's crack. it makes them stupid fucked up. Oh, they get it's crack. drunk it's off crack. it. Yeah, or basically. Your alcohol, so you, yeah. When, when, you, when you go to Yuzuka Manor and you see them like just like flocking on their sides with no pupils, it's because they've been drinking tea. Or they fucks got kicked up. by lease. Yeah, they get kicked by lease, yeah. Uh -huh. it, it fucks them up. After so they tried to tea. ban it and it didn't work. Uh -huh. So they try to like consume it in moderation, but it fucking messes uh -huh. them right up. Uh -huh. Yeah. Addictive. So it's the opposite. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, all right. This is uh, Mike. This is for you. Hang on. I thought you were gonna tell me it's the last. I mean, I've lost. I'm so many points behind. Shh. 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 Quiet. Be quiet. This question is going to be worth. He's <laughs> trying to figure out the difference. Give me one chance to get it. Yeah, you got one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. Um, one shot. Because yeah. mum's spaghetti. Yeah. That comes once in Aeosivia 4.0. Um, okay, this is going to be worth six points. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is all or nothing. You ever, you know how in Family Feud where the first two rounds are not worth fucking anything, and the third round, but is that the only triple one that, round is but just that worth, triple yeah. round is the only. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't even feel good about this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you, you know how in Family Feud, like people don't watch it for the points, and like no, they one watch it for Steve it. Harvey because they, they're watching for Steve Harvey. Yeah, they yeah. watch it. Yeah, for yeah. This is kind of this is kind of like that. Okay. Um, All right, Steve. What's up, Steve? So, Mike, why do the Namazu wear bells? Why do they wear bells? bells? Yeah, they no got bells all over. like fucking cats. Once again, I'm going to assume the answer is fucking stupid. It might be. It might be. Uh, let's huh. see. Why do they... Why? I have a bell on my cat in case he gets lost. So. Mm. <laughs> That's why he has a bell. So. <laughs> I mean... That, I mean, maybe that's it. I don't, I mean, it's, I don't want, because the thing is, it's not with the Namazu, I'm never going to assume it's a religious thing. It's either money or fucking some just dumb belief. I don't, I have no confidence in that race of fucking beastmen ever. I mean, they are basically like aquatic lollafels, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. So Sly seems really confused by that statement. Well, lollafels not religious? At all? Like, the same proportions. Okay. It's, that has nothing to do with religion, so gross. I don't know why you brought that up. Um, I just I almost want to go with the stupid fucking answer. Well, so they don't get lost. So they, so they, don't, so they don't fucking get lost. It's not, if it, it, honestly, if I give you a different answer and, it's not, and it ends up being because they're, they get fucking lost, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Um, I'm, I'm going to... I'm gonna say it wards off the the sound of the bells wards off predators. Wards off predators. Yeah, they are catfish after all. Hmm. It's not the right answer, but I mean it's that. I mean, it might, get... but it's not the right answer. No, and yeah, yeah and it's, 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 it's better not be because they get lost. Sly, what do you think? Yeah, it's like a pun. Communicate communication between themselves. It's a kind of um... they can talk. They can talk. <laughs> No, 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 no. But what I mean by that is just um, to kind of make them aware of where one another is because so their whiskers, their whiskers are mm -hmm. incredibly sensitive. They can find like underwater rivers. They can find buried treasure. They don't need a bell to be able to like no. can find each themselves. Other. Can I guess okay. one more thing then before you say it? Is the number yeah, of bells? Sure. If the number is the number of bells they wear a sign of their social status? I don't. I, I've only ever seen them with one bell. Okay, so I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. That's why. That's yeah, why I only, I was... only ever seen them with one bell. Well, when, you, when you said uh, bells, I never actually paid attention. I only remember the one dude that wears the bell that we kick, and the fate. But I don't remember if the fate had more than one bell. I'm sorry, the the B rank. No. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. It was it was worth a shot. Hmm. I mean, we both yeah, guessed at this, so I don't. No, no. All right. Okay. So, this is this is actually a really interesting one. In the battle that united Yangtze, so the final battle of this war uh, that Ganon was, I don't know, undertaking to unite Yangtze, mm -hmm. led to the founding of Doma, he sent uh, Namazu to swim across the One River in the middle of a battle. So I was right. Uh, <laughs> under, under fire from... He's Paul Revere. From... Well, it, it's less that. It's more like the Battle of Marathon. Okay. Um, so he swims across the river um, under fire, uh, delivers this letter, which basically proved uh, absolutely integral to victory. Mm -hmm. So when Ganon became king of Doma, he uh, had bells forged for all of the Namazu and appointed them as his royal messengers. 
Paul Revere. So I, I they didn't they fucking the United States didn't make a fucking horse for every one of the fucking people who did that thing. No. The British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming. Paul Revere. Yeah. What's that name? Paul Revere. Come on. Um, yeah, it was, more, it was more like a battle of marathon, right. but he made them special bells and said, you're a real special boys. So you're all my royal messages. You're <laughs> special boys. And they were really important to, to Burma because they, again, their, their whiskers, their barbels, as they call them, um, are, uh, they, they help them develop like, uh, like mining trades. They help them find like underwater uh, sorry, underground, like fresh water sources. Um, they're an incredibly important part of the, the, the Doman uh, society and hierarchy. But yeah, they're basically, they're, they were like the post Moogles of, uh, of off art. And now they're assholes. Now they're assholes. Yeah. They get drunk off the tea. If they Moogles are assholes as well. Exactly. True. More alike than they seem. Mm. Yeah. Now we just have to wait for a good King Namazu. Oh my God. So do you, do you guys think we're going to see a Namazu Primal? No. No. I mean, we already have one as, like, what, an A rank? Or, uh, no, it's, it's a B rank. Well, it's not a Primal. That's just a big-ass well, Namazu. It's a big-ass Namazu. I mean, we've got, uh, we've got, you know, other beast tribes as, uh, as hunt monks. Um, they, I mean, they've got to be, they've got to be a, a daily, right? At some point, yeah. I don't want to fucking affiliate with my, myself with them at all, but you know, I'm gonna have to. Maybe, at some point. So the new, the new crafting tribe. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, man. Everyone wants. To, everyone wants to say that's gonna be the Kojin because they're so addict. They're so like into trade, and I'm just like, nah, man. I don't. Well, the Anantra are crafters. And the Anantra yeah, because... are crafters. Huh? Yeah. That's the Anantra's shtick. Um, well, the Namazu are trying to establish themselves as traders. There's like a long side quest chain about a Namazu who, who wants to be like the next great merchant. Um, and uh, he, he manages to recover a bunch of uh, an abandoned cache of Balain weapons that he trades with the villagers of Namai. Because aren't the, aren't the Namazu in like, what's it called, Yukuza Castle? Or Yukuza. Um... I can't remember the name of yeah, it. Yeah, Yuzuka. Uh, Yuzuka. Yuzuka Castle. Yuzuka, uh, it's not, uh, Castle or Manor or... I think they call it. Yeah, yeah. Manor. Yeah, um, but the, the, the Yuzuka were... Um, they were... Um, they were... If I remember Patriots. correctly, they were... Yeah. They were like governors and stuff. Yeah. Well, well, the, the Yuzuka was a, um, a, a an affluent uh, clan of Dharma. Yeah. And they were most well known for uh their forging and their skill in the use of firearms actually yeah um and they were really important in uh sort of the initial fights against galmod and galmod uh used a lot of their inventions I i'm pretty sure the the big um the big uh like golem things the big like armored golem things that we see uh, going around, I'm pretty sure that the Yuzuka originally developed them to like protect the city. I think it was the Yuzuka. Someone did. I'm pretty sure it was the Yuzuka. And uh, the Garlands turned them against their own people. And it was a bit upsetting. And they did, I mean, look what they did to those poor, those poor apes. The Avengers. I, All right, so let's say Xavier, everyone. What the fuck? That, um, that, they did the same thing. They weaponized we had... fucking wild apes. These things have fucking strong tank busters, man. Those those apes are not weaponized. Those those They're apes. Fucking Magitek. Oh, those ones? Yeah. The Mag oh, they're, they're, they're not actual apes. Those are just Magitek. I thought I thought you were talking about like the big the big wild ape things in uh, in Yorkshire. No, no, no. Um. Yeah, a lot of Winstons. Um, so that, that's 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 say as if it. Uh, do you guys want to want to take a speculation at the score? How do you think you did, Sly? Uh, well, I actually kept scoring on seven point five sticky slide? notes. Um, one point five. Is it seven point five? It was two and seven point five. Eight. 8.5 8 to 2.5. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, because you just scored the last point right there. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, no, you didn't. No, I, no, I wait, didn't. Oh, so you would have tied that's us. What if we did a tiebreaker then? 
It would have tie. Oh, I would have come up with a tiebreaker. Okay. Yeah. Could you could just do one right now? No, I don't so, do it. So I have 8.5 to 2.5. I told you, man. 8.5 to 2.5. I told you that this has been an awful last couple. I had absolutely zero preparation or, or care that, or knowledge. It was no bad. No excuses. No excuses. You've, you've known that this was going to be yeah. Xavier this week for longer than I have. Yes, I have. I prepared. I prepared. I bet. Yeah. Nuts. And I did Nuts. nothing. And I did nothing to prepare for it. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. It's been a How bad. How do you feel? I feel fine because it's been a bad couple of weeks, so I'm I'm fine with two and a half. I mean, two and a half means like you got. I got half of a bunch right. Yeah. I got half of five questions. That's exactly what happened. Oh, is that what happened? You didn't get a full point. No, I never got a full point. I got half of five uh, questions. Every every single time I do these questions, I'm like, all right, these ones are like. No, there. I almost every single question I could tell you exactly where the answer was. I just couldn't tell you the answer. The problem early on I had in Ayers of you is like I would talk myself out of stupid fucking answers, which actually were yes. fucking answers, and I committed to yeah. the fucking stupid answers that were actually the fucking. If you had gotten the drinking one wrong, I was commit. like, "That's not a stupid answer." I don't know why you think that's a stupid answer. It was like the <laughs> so most well, logical answer. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, "Well, it kind of seems stupid. Let me just roll with this." All right. Here's, sure. here's a here's the thing, guys, and this is this is going to be important for for future Ayers of yous, uh for people uh-huh. listening. Like I do, I do ask for like viewer questions and stuff yeah. like that. Um, mm-hmm. These these questions, what's important to me is that they all tell a story and they tell us something about the world, and they're not just like a you know yes or no, like right or wrong kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. That they can like produce some sort of discussion, some interest. Um, that you can approach them like rationally without necessarily having seen the exact source and still work them out because they sort of fit cohesively into the world. Um, and that they're not things like, what is the name of this one character that appears in this background scene in part three of this fucking side quest? Um, and a lot of the questions that you guys uh, were submitting for this one were questions like that. They were like, what date did this happen? What is this guy's name who appears here briefly for one moment or whatever? And it's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use those. Um, so. Yeah, I do like you guys submitting questions. If I didn't use many questions that you guys suggested this time, then that's probably why. Is like the purpose of Ao Zivia is not to trick these guys up and make them look stupid. No, we do that on our own. It feels like they do that on their own. Exactly, they're going to do that regardless. The purpose of it is to give us all a platform where we can all learn a little bit and like discuss some of like the new bits of story and lore that have been introduced in the game recently. Um, so I hope that's what we did today, and I hope that you found it all really interesting. Honestly, that was a lot more interesting than the last couple in terms of the stories that were told afterwards. But it is all brand new stuff. Yeah, it's all brand new stuff. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yeah. And and the thing is, we've got in the East now, we've got like 5,000 years plus of history in Eorzea that we can like dig into and that we've been able to like construe and all that. And we're slowly going to be getting that like piece by piece about uh, about the East, about Othard now. Um, and I am so excited. I'm so, so excited. It's going to give us so much material, um, so much more stuff that we can learn. So, uh, yeah. When's, uh, yeah. The, uh, when's the encyclopedia? So, I, have a, so I, I had a question, a very important question that was brought up to me regarding uh-huh. the show. The show's mm-hmm. called Aeorzivia. Mm-hmm. We are now an author. Mm-hmm. And, Aeor- and Aeorzia. Mm-hmm. Do we- yeah, there's actually quite a few um, uh, localization errors. This, there, there were a bunch of localization errors in the text for the for the main scenario, and like side quests and stuff all through Stormblood. But there are a few where they actually refer to Othard as Eorzea. There's like people talking about Othard in Othard and being like, yes, in all of Eorzea, I've never seen. It's like, you know, in Eorzea. So if they, if they can do it, I can do it. Well, okay, there you go. That's if Koji can do it. I can do it. Fuck it, YOLO. If uh, if he's at PAX West, he's usually at PAX West. If he's at PAX West, I'll ask him for you. Every time yeah. I bring him news from you, it's about something that got fucked Actually, up. Don't don't ask him why there were so many localization errors because like no I'm no no. Gonna, I'm gonna make like a dick move. Ethos wants to like, know why people in all. Hey, why'd you fuck up? No, so you don't much. ask why there's localization errors. You ask. Uh, I was I noticed in a lot of the text that there's just like NPCs and author that refer to Eorzea often. I don't know if they're yeah. like from Eorzea or. No, I noticed that there's like a lot of text that is still in Japanese because like you just didn't get around to localize. But I mean, to be fair, Hingashi is in <laughs> is Japan, so. 
Yeah, localization, the only time I, the only time I really noticed that or deliberate. The only time I really noticed that was in Suino Sato, and that was one of the Ruby Princess. Um, uh, yeah, there's a couple lines there. There's a couple yeah. of lines in like quite a few places. Where I'm just like, oh, jeez, guys. Um, Translate. Yeah, I I I have mm -hmm. heard um, from Yoshida directly that the localization team has been under so much pressure um, for the release of Stormblood. They've been like absolutely working their asses off. So don't don't if you ever see Koji at a con or something, don't be like. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you made mistakes about your own. Give him a hug. Buy him a beer. Exactly. Like, buy him a freaking beer. Holy shit! Yeah, you know exactly. what's gonna happen? You go to buy him a beer. Hmm. Yoshida's gonna be like, "Get the fuck over here. We need you." <laughs> <laughs> buy Yoshi a beer too. They need it. Fuck. That's true. That's very true. Well, well Yoshi, Yoshi, Yoshi will take the Yoshi will take the beer. I'll take the beer yeah. and about two dozen cigarettes. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So get get some cigs along. Any good convention yeah. you go to, if you just go out the front door and he's and he's attending, there's a good chance. If you if you wait about an hour, you'll see him at least once. That's true. Yeah. Um. Anyway, do we do we have any other community news at the moment? No. Uh, the only other thing that was interesting that's not really relevant to the show is just the the challenge modes that people have been attempting or completing mm -hmm. on Reddit, which have fascinated me. But okay. they're not it's relevant. So fucking them. stupid, dude! It was great. We watched them on the live sh on my live stream so, earlier. Wait, so talk talk to me like I've been in bed for the past five days. Hi, Ethis. How are you feeling? I'm good. Can you explain to me what you're talking about <laughs> and about these challenge things? So on <laughs> FF on I'm FF on FF logs, I don't know how these are made, but there's like there's like feats of strength, sort of similar to World of Warcraft, where you do these fights in like a super unorthodox way, but still complete mm -hmm. it. O1 okay. Savage, for example, it's no one can die. That's the ba basic rule. The same person needs to be hit by each twin bolt, or like both twin bolts need to hit a single target, basically meaning paladins, the only way to do that with cover. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, so they need two paladins. Um, only four people can split the the AoE from the split damage AoE. Uh -huh. Every 11 bolt needs, to, two people need to be stacked for each 11 bolt, so two 11 bolts hit two people. But you also mm -hmm. can't pair with the same person twice, so like if it's both tanks the first time, then one, then the tank has to go with the healer the next time, the tank has to go with the DPS the next time, and then however many targets they cycle through for each 11 bolt. And finally, all eight players need to be hit by every clamp. Oh no. You see why that shit sounds fucking stupid? And they did it. And a group beat it doing that. They just hyper-mitigated every clamp. It was like Deployed Adlo, Divine Veil, Passage Jeez. of Arms, Sacred Soil, um, uh, Collective Unconscious, and I think one of them had a tank LB, too. How do they stay on the fucking map? Because if it does zero, you don't get knocked back. Oh. You mitigate it down to zero, Jeez. and that's it. The O2 Savage so one was way like harder. <laughs> So you can yeah. set like special conditions on logs where like it only reports it if you like fulfill those conditions. And then oh uh, yeah, there was a, like there was an open video slot. They did O2 Savages challenge. They same group did it. I was just fascinated because I love these kind of things. And Frosty's interview with them a while back, he asked if we could get like raid specific meta achievements and stuff like that. Obviously, mm -hmm. these are a little bit over the top regarding stuff <sighs> we get achievements for in game. I don't even think they have the technology to track this this kind of shit in game. Well, Logs does, so why the fuck wouldn't they? Well, Logs kind of do. Logs will tell you who gets hit by each mechanic and yeah. whatnot, so... Yeah. But, um... And then, like, the O2 Savage one, again, no deaths. Mm -hmm. Um... You can only use the Levitation Machine once the entire fight. Yeah. <laughs> you see why outside the shit is Except for the stupid? very beginning. You can, no. you can start Levitated mm -mm. for that first Earthquake. Because otherwise, it'd be fucking stupid. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Um, I can't wait to see what they do for fucking O4S. Yeah, I don't even know like what some... the fuck they could do. Um, what's uh, another one? Oh god. What's another one? Uh, and then um, you can the, never the get petrification. Yeah, you can never get two stacks of gradual petrification. So they had to yeah. both shirk the dragoon to get him aggro for the third one because he was the tankiest member. See why this uh, shit sounds fucking stupid? And then we actually had to do shit. And then, <laughs> and then you also had to. You, and then you also couldn't get hit by erosion more than once, which is maniacal probe. So you had to kill it before the third maniacal probe. So not only did they do all this shit, I think it's the fastest recorded kill on FF Logs, period. Or it's close to it. I just yeah, love well, this. If you're going to do it with those kinds of conditions, you'd have to be doing the fight like freaking clockwork. But the thing, this is like, we're there's still, like, it's been only two weeks of loot. <laughs> so, we're going to need harder challenges. 
Yeah, you know, like how, pe how people have optimized so fucking quick to do this I random mean, fucking bullshit. It's also like, you it, got to factor in how low they're they're scaled as well. Yeah, the yeah. scale, yeah. the item level. I think, scale. I think it's great. I think they fucking nailed this too. It's awesome. Yeah, and I think that if they didn't, this group will will nail it the way they should have nailed. It. <laughs> they'll fa I don't know how they're gonna do O three Savage. Like yeah, like two people stacked for Cardinals. The critical hit can't hit the same person twice. I don't know. There's only six critical hits, I think, in the whole fight in O3 Savage. So feasibly doable, but you'd fucking hate it at the same time. And you can't have anyone die. So mm. I'm looking forward to see what they come up with. I just thought, for me, that's a community highlight because that's fucking sweet. I love seeing that's like a community that really thing cool. that, really, that really people cool. are getting into. Uh, we also have the Moonfire Fair, which was given a date on uh, Twitter. Um, let me see when the exact date was. 8-8 eight, eight through the 26th. So August 8th through the 26th is the Moonfire Fair coming up. Can't August wait to, 8th? Yeah, August 8th. Can't wait to uh, do it in 10 minutes and then not... Yeah, yeah. yeah you boom dance. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, I just noticed that ends on the 26th. What's the 27th? The Rising. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. So we still have no idea what the Rising is going to be. Like, well, we week. know that we're going to learn what the next job is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the August 27th is the four-year anniversary since Realm Reborn. That's crazy. That's fucking wild. Holy shit. Yeah. Four years. Four years, two expansions, a uh, partridge and a pear tree, you know. Down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> please please hope that, that Yoshi P wasn't watching. Down the toilet. Don't translate that, Koji. Don't, uh, don't, tra he probably, yeah. he actually knows English pretty well, but don't translate. <laughs> <laughs> he hears toilet and automatically knows what the fuck that means. Yeah. Four well, years, I'm never much. getting back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been happy with my four years. All right. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, they're just, those were the community highlights I wanted to do. Also, the single clear, the single heel 04 Savage is pretty sweet. Oh, that's pretty sweet. That's, yeah. that's, that's every that's, dude, that that's thread phenomenal. on, that thread on Reddit that's fucking is annoying. It's Wait, like, so is this, is this one group that's doing all this? No, th this is a different group that did this versus the group that did this challenge modes. Different group. But right. it's, it's two different groups. But the, okay. thre the Reddit thread on the 04 Savage single heal literally is only about the fact that the healer clicks his skills. And it's about <laughs> like, who nothing cares else. how the healer heals? I, like, you everyone's like, the, as long as you're getting mitigated play. and, and you know, healed, the, I don't yeah, care. Like, what, you're going to tell him how to play? No. no, but I just thought it was it's hilarious that this, they're, they're, they're like, they worked really hard to complete this challenge, do it single heal, and the healer obviously has to do 90% of the work there while the rest of the group kills it faster. But it, it ultimately just boils down to one of the best healers in the world, and he's a fucking clicker? I was like, <laughs> I was like well, he's better than you, so I don't know. Yeah, like... <laughs> and for it's reference, really it was a Nocturnal Astro, the same... Uh, not the same Astro, but... By the way, the first job to solo heal a 12 Savage as well as a Nocturnal good. Astro. Oh, fucking good. So, put, put that. Oh, I'd like to point out, by the way, the group that killed Maniacal Probe with the fastest, or killed Catastrophe with the fastest time, the one that did the challenge, they didn't have mm -hmm. an Astro. <laughs> so, they could have killed it faster, theoretically, unless the personal DPS that the, uh, the healers were putting out was higher than the proposed balance. But the monk did like five point like 5.5k oh no 5.05k or something without the astro oh. and the dragoon did like 4.7 or something like that so they were monstrous without an astro that <laughs> oh they were a fucking that's baus it's pretty baus. Yeah. yeah so if you guys uh, look all that shit up look up ff logs challenge modes look up 04 savage single clear those are some pretty sweet highlights and you can honestly watch us get an idea of how people can kind of optimize in raids and then like take away See, from it in a little bit i think that's so nice because like i'm i'm of the opinion that like 99 percent of what ff logs produces in terms of like community attitudes and sentiment is complete garbage um so it's really cool to see something like this coming out of it so fucking shout out yeah i agree that. this is this is like a really cool use of, of ff logs it's not it's not entirely about the numbers but the numbers help you get to where sure. you are there the optimization yeah so i think it's fucking awesome so that's yeah, why. Good on you. Shout out to you. Shout, Shit. Shout out to the. I don't know who the fuck came up with those challenges. I don't know if it's the group that beat it that came up with the challenge. I don't fucking know. But well, either way, come to Tonbury and fucking carry me, all right? <laughs> all right. Don't sweet. carry him. All right. Now, Ethis needs to go take more drugs and feel better. So let's wrap up the show.
I do, because I plan to stream in a couple of hours. If you you do that. sound better than you did at the beginning of the show, by the way. Yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't talked in like five days, so I think it's probably good that I'm starting to use my voice a little bit. I just want to open Now it. you got to rest it until the stream. That's yeah. smooth, epic, sick voice. All right, well, use that voice one more time and tell everyone where they can find you at, Ethis. All right. Uh, you guys can find me <laughs> by uh, opening a new, a new tab and just typing in the address bar, Ethis, E-T-H-Y-S, and that will probably take you to my Twitter, my Twitch, my YouTube, my Facebook. Uh, you can follow me in, in all those places. I do, as you could probably guess, if you, if you haven't seen it before, you can probably guess from today's episode. I do mostly uh, Final Fantasy XIV lore videos on my YouTube. Um, and that's, that's great if you're into that kind of stuff. And uh, I stream most nights, uh, 9 p.m. Pacific. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a chill stream. We play a lot of fourteen, a little bit of some other stuff, and it's a lot of like lore and storytelling and uh, good times. So appreciate it. Thanks for having me, as always. Thanks for coming, Baklava. Sorry. What about chocolate muffin? Come on, chocolate muffin, my little chocolate muffin. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Sly, aka Gray Fox. You can find me on Instagram at Sly, aka Gray Fox 07. You can find me on Twitter at Sly the Fox. You can find me on Facebook at Sly, aka Gray Fox. You can find me on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash development room. Uh, you can find me tonight doing raid. Uh, I, I had to calm down my static because they're asking, Sly, where are you? Sly, where are you? I'm winning a quiz show. That's where I am. Hold on. So, uh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Before, before you, before you ask me where I exist, just uh -huh. give me, give me, give me one, one second, Sly. No. I need, no. I need just one, one, one sec. Why is this not working? Well, well, you know, you can find Happy at Twitch no, TV. So I mean, it doesn't Happy matter. One two two seven. You know, I, I uh, everywhere: control. YouTube, Facebook, I've Twitter. Still got, I've still got control, Sly. Twitter. You can I've find still, him anywhere. I've still, I've still so got um, we will see you next week for no. um, I've something. Still. I don't know. Happy will probably tell you on Twitter <laughs> or his channel. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I found it. Oh but, no! Uh, don't die. I mean, I was oh, on. A, I was on a pie. Look here. I'll show the pie. Look, see there. I am on a pie. And then here's. Sly on a muffin. Oh dear. I'm just saying, I promised at the beginning of the show I would do it. And I'm a man of my word. Well, having you on a meat pie is, is upsetting. That's it's a, a pizza pot pie. Get it right. It's a fucking meat pie, dude. No, dude, it's literally all the ingredients of a pizza in a pot pie. Yeah, Why but it's not pot pie. This conversation? But it is a pot pie. No, it's not a pot pie. Yes, it is. <laughs> You can call it a pot pie. We're, we're absolutely pie. having this fucking conversation. I <laughs> still don't believe this. Listen, don't don't argue with an Australian about the constitution of, of savory pies. All right, it's like the only thing. Oh, it's do. savory, all right. It's just a, <clears throat> it's just not. It's just a pot pie. It's just that's what it is. Bye, for myself. All right, for myself. I, I, happy. I, I, I gotta say goodbye. I gotta say goodbye. goodbye. I gotta say goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for watching. You can find me everywhere, Mr. Happy One Two Seven. I already Twitter, did that for you. You're fucking YouTube, late. You were Instagram, doing Instagram. You were doing muffin shit. So at the no, pie place, I already did that shit at the muffin place. We'll see you next week. Yeah, weekend. and then they, and then he's gotta mm. go. So we're so now we've got now it's all fucked up. So it's fine. Look, slides half slides are practically replaced with the muffin. So on that note, everyone, thank you for joining us. We will see you next week, and uh, until then, take care. I can't see Bye, you anymore, everybody. Slide. Bye, everyone. Okay. Love you. Bye. They can't, they can't see you anymore. There you go. Good muffin. Now I can open chat and see what they say about the fucking muffin.